Welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name is Sean Bell. I'm joined by Matthew Murray. Hello. And James Farley. Hello. Um, I, I haven't I haven't thought of anything funny for the intro this week. <laughs> Let's start um, by talking about the fact you did your FIFA stream. I did my FIFA stream. Yeah, that was good. It, it was it was incredible. That was actually I actually success. enjoyed that a lot. Um, I don't, I mean I don't you know everyone was like oh does this mean you're into football now? No. Um, but I did enjoy streaming. FIFA are we, are we going to talk, talk about this in what you've been playing, or can we do it now? Or what would you want to do? I mean, I, mean, I was going to because there's a bit of feedback about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Do you want to? Should we just do? Yeah, the, let's get straight to it. Well, okay, fine. Uh, this show is supported by Patreon. Um, our ten dollar patrons uh, regularly complaining that they literally do not have enough free time to go through all the stuff we're putting out. So if that sounds like a life problem that you want to have. Uh, why not head to patreon.com forward slash tcgs um our patreon producers for this episode are alan m nash steve garrett and aaron patrick what is in the feedback matt so rich burn starts off hi fellas like villa getting back into the prem sean's journey has been a long time coming but will is well worth the wait absolutely <laughs> glorious stuff from both bell and the chat i definitely want to hear sean come up with more of his own names of things uh kick in had me in an unacceptable <laughs> amount of stitches for some reason back of the net well, i can't um, remember what was a kick in a, a corner kick did i refer to that was that what i called the kick it was, was yeah 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 yeah, Probably, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. There's. Uh, I should. I. I sort of stopped myself and then made a joke of it. I should have just gone straight in with it when I referred to the other team as enemies. <laughs> I think yeah, I'm just going to yeah, maintain like that. that. Enemies or baddies, depending on how. I'm also, feeling. when you were quite um, confused when like the second half started, now we're going the opposite way. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember we go. You go different ways now, don't yeah, you? In the second legitimate, half, legitimately forgot. Um. So yeah, that, that was good. I mean, to be, and to be clear, this isn't something I was like doing as a joke. I just genuinely have no, I no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> unbelievable actually brad yeah. in iowa covers that hey fellas on last week's show i loved hearing sean attempt to define some common terms from the sport i know as soccer as an american i know about as much as the sport uh, about the sport as he does and i honestly have no idea what he got right and what he got wrong <laughs> i do however understand what matt and james are going through a few a few years back i attended a baseball game with some non-american uh with non-american i was stunned to talk to someone who didn't know what home run, strikeout, foul ball, walk, or stolen base were. These are just some of the things that every American seems to understand from birth. Just curious if any of these terms make sense to you, or if it's all just gibberish. So um, I love a show, keep it a good work. So home run, I presume we all know what that is. Yeah, it's when you go all the way around the whole, yeah. all the bases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does I it have to be in one go, or does it, is it just yeah. when you get to the end? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was in one I go. Assume, yeah. You hit, yeah. You hit uh, it, and then you run around the whole of them. Okay. Strikeout, I, I think that's when someone does like, it's three, isn't it's it? Three throws, and if you don't yeah. hit it, then you're out. Yeah. A foul ball, I assume it's just if someone throws it badly. Yeah. Like cricket. I think so, yeah. So, yeah. so it doesn't count as a strike if the. Yeah. I nearly said um, the bowler. If the bowler throws oh, the ball God. badly. <laughs> <laughs> a walk. I mean, a walk. I mean, uh, is, I'm going to guess that that's maybe when people go from base to base. Is I, that when. Okay. I'm probably is, wrong about this. I mean, this. none of us know. So this is no, no. But is this when the bowler bowls... Not bowler. What is it? The throw, <laughs> what is it called? Bowler. Is it thrower? No, I don't know what it's called. The person no, who's like chucking pitcher. the ball. Pitcher. The pitcher, yeah, that's okay. it. When the pitcher is chucking the ball and they make like mistakes, so then they get a free walk like to the next base. That's what I'm guessing. Mate, possibly. I thought, okay. I think, didn't we not just cover that with foul ball? Or is it... Is it no, no, this I is where the no, consequence, no though. You know, it's like... Okay, yeah. right. Uh, and a stolen base. Now... No idea. Stole, okay, obviously I know what the bases are. Stolen base. Um, I, is that when maybe like two people are on different bases and someone runs to the other base when someone's already there, but they haven't? If they started being run out in cricket, maybe it's that. Oh yeah, maybe. And it turns yeah, and it turns out to the guy in front should have yeah. ran on, but he didn't. But yeah, Brad and I or any other Americans or anyone's just found a baseball. Please let us know what we got right and what we got wrong. But yeah, FIFA. Yeah. The journey, Sean Bell, the journey. That yeah, um, that was absolutely <laughs> immense for, for, for from the first minute where you had that picture of Wembley in and your face in what you know with, with even the dot matrix sort of style uh, yeah. to your webcam making out as if you're on the big screen at Wembley. From that onwards, it was a uh, it was brilliant and like we oh, cheers, had man. like you know. It was it ninety plus people in the chat for a long time? So the yeah, chat was yeah, popping. that was ridiculous. Over 100 it was amazing how many people think, turned up. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was one hundred and one. It peaked at one point. It's, oh, and the same people were like chatting and 
yeah, it was it was it was gag central in the chat. It was brilliant. It's, it's just really funny. It's just really great to see you sort of getting to grips with it and you know <laughs> getting your first goals were were, <laughs> were great. And people in the chat taking taking training really seriously, saying, "Oh, yeah, he's yeah. really got to work harder. This is not focusing on the game in hand. This is he's never going to you know live, live get into the Premier League with this sort of you know attitude mentality." Yeah. Um, but then you know, Hull City thrashed uh, Real Madrid three 0 So yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, know you <laughs> pre season friendly of all time, Hull. But- Real Madrid. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we've been discussing whether or not I need to change the difficulty, haven't we? Yeah, because I, I honestly don't know. I well, this is what I think of it. Can we talk about FIFA now? Then can we just can we do it now? Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't going to mention it in what we've been playing, so okay. yeah, go for it. Because you see, I love this stream, Sean. I thought it was fantastic, mm-hmm. and I just it was one <laughs> of the you. best I've ever seen. Because I was sitting there, and I, I had no idea how you were going to approach this and how it was going to end up. <laughs> but I I think though, you see, what I want to know from you, Sean, is. Mm. Did it feel good when those first goals went in? Oh yeah, of course it did. That's nice because it, it and because it felt like a <laughs> oh, bit of a struggle. Nice. Like that's that's my concern is that like as funny as it is, like just absolutely thrashing everyone. Um, like you know, after sort of week ten, yeah, I'm. I, it's not going to feel like a struggle anymore, and I'm going to need to uh, adjust the difficulty. I think, but I mean, we'll see. Well, I think. I um, mean, with that, it will tell you anyway if you start to keep thrashing teams on a regular basis they're like oh, you probably should increase the difficulty now because this is a bit I mean a bit uh, easy uh, James hit a whole thrush Real Madrid in a 4-0 on a pre-season friendly I think it, it's pretty realistic we really it? know yeah. how easy yeah. Yeah. I mean it, like, it is interesting way. the way you sort like obviously I, I still understand like none of the technicalities of it but like like it, you know you so quickly learn that like obviously being surrounded by people on the other team is bad it's yeah. like it, like it's sort of like on a very very sort of basic strategic level it's like it's about just sort of reading like the shapes and the formations yeah. and it's like oh but if i can pass the ball to that guy who's out like on the outside he can go around and and you know and, and I, as I say, i'm definitely using all the wrong terms but it's yeah you realize it is just about like shapes and movement and, yeah. and and it is sort of inherently like I don't think I could be bothered sitting through a, like an actual football match but then obviously everyone's like that's what highlights are for that feels like cheating to me no um, I mean that's the whole thing because but, that is what yeah. football is it's like watching yeah. it's watching the strategy play out as well and like yeah. adapting to it as it's going on at the time mm-hmm. and everything and I think yeah. like if you play it on harder stuff later you'll get even more into that and it can be really yeah. cool because you can start to like mm-hmm. notice the team like the you know, the opposition like you know how they how they're set up and how you can exploit it and stuff like that and it's kind of yeah because it... like like at the moment like the difficulty I've got it on like if I've got the ball I can just sprint past everyone yeah which well, what difficulty <laughs> once I realise that at the moment it, you what sorry what difficulty are you playing on at the moment uh, whatever is the lowest I think yeah I think it's on amateur yeah oh okay which certainly describes me so you know. It, it was definitely, <laughs> yeah. like, certainly for that first stream, it was the right decision because it was just funny as fuck. But also... Um, but we'll, we'll just see how long that joke runs, I guess. The other thing that I thought was interesting, and I don't know if you'll agree with me on this, is that I think, did this feel quite... It, it looked like it was quite accessible to you as well, though. Like, the game... Oh, absolutely, yeah, way, yeah, yeah, You know, it, um, it didn't look like, like it was the, at all difficult for you to, like, figure out what you needed to do and all that kind of thing. It looked... No, yeah. certainly not like, you know, I think I mentioned, um, so like I tried to play NBA 2K17, the one we got for free yeah. um, on PlayStation Plus. Um, and like even knowing a bit about basketball, I found that really impenetrable. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, yeah, this this felt pretty accessible. I, like Obviously, there's a lot I still don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally, like this button is pass, uh, pass this button is shoot. Um, <laughs> and you move around with the stick. Like you can get by at least to begin with yeah. like just knowing that so yeah but i, I just I, yeah i've seen like those first goals go in it just looked you did look genuinely happy when it happened and i just oh, thought God, yeah. i thought that was, yeah, was um, great. that was great you know <laughs> i mean and the thing is i know that you're never going to be into football or anything but yeah. what i was hoping you might get for this from this is like some kind of feeling of like why we like it a lot you know, you know yeah. at least playing it like why i play this so much because it's like yeah 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 there is yeah, absolutely. it is good like it's it is good to yeah. play through the, um, so if you haven't watched the stream, I ended up supporting, or sorry, not supporting, playing for um, Hull City because um, they had a tiger on the logo, and that was that was, that's why you know what else am I going to base it off? Um, I've I've been reading up on the team. Their owner is an arsehole. <laughs> He's, like, have you? Are you? I don't know if this is something you're familiar with or. Um, but basically, he's been trying to like rename the team for like the last like five years or something. 
Yeah. And he, want, yeah, he wants to rename it. Yeah, Tigers, isn't it? Isn't that, yeah, 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 yeah. And just none of the fans want it. And it's just been this constant thing. And then he did, like, at one point, he did a survey where you either had to tick, like, uh, like yes, I'm happy to rename to Hull City Tigers with the continued support of the current <laughs> owners, or no, I don't want it to be renamed. <laughs> yeah, it's a dick. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it was yeah really enjoyable doing that. Um, I'm looking forward to next week, or well, this week tonight. Yeah, tonight, by the time yeah. you, you listen to this, if you listen what, to what, what about, I mean, what, what do you think of the actual journey itself? Like the you know just the uh, I do, I do the know actual single fine. player campaign like, you're doing. Like I'd heard people like some people have told me it's like really shit and you know like oh there's like way too much like actual football between the story bits. I thought the pacing's been okay so far. Yeah, I don't know if that changes. It it does change. Like okay, <laughs> at the moment they're they're kind of like setting you up for everything at the moment, like to show you how right. everything works. But yeah, it's yeah. um yeah it it does change a bit. Okay, fair enough. Well, we'll see. But no, but yeah, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's great, stop. and yeah, and if you listen to this and you haven't seen it, like the uh, the archive of Sean's stream is up on our YouTube channel, and there'll be a new stream tonight if you listen to us on Wednesday. Uh, uh, all all credit to Matt for making a YouTube friendly version of the stream. <laughs> by the way, I'm I'm oh, just yeah. going to have to turn the music off for the yeah, future. No, I've aren't I? That, but there is a setting in in the menus to turn music off. Um, okay, so cool. if you you if you could do that, then yeah. Yeah, because like, basically... like we mentioned it on the stream. It's like, oh yeah, I wonder if we'll get a copyright strike. We got. I mean, I lost count. Of how many we got? Yeah, <laughs> but I, I was thought. I thought, okay, we'll get it. But what would happen is it'll be those films where you can't monetize this video anymore because oh, yeah, yeah. you know I'm like, fine. But no, we got. We, not only do we get multiple ones of those, we also mm. got one where it said, "Oh, this is actually blocked in a few countries." <laughs> and then I was like, okay, a few, that's fine. And then I, I like, there's a, it's like um, you hover over this section in, in like the YouTube back end to see what countries, and it's seventy countries. <laughs> it's like it's like, but yeah, most that's of the countries of them, anyone could even name. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, okay, it's not yeah. just blocked in a few; it's basically blocked everywhere. So I had to Amazing. go in, download the video, cut cut out this this one part where it has this one particular song, and then the others are still in there. But that's just no monetization. But who cares about that? So um, Amazing. yeah, if you go next time uh, and uh, and turn that menu music off, it should be a yes. little bit better. Well, because I think because it's only the menus, isn't it? It's not like yeah, you know, like a lot of games. If you took the music out, like you'd you'd be missing quite a lot of the experience. But actually, during the actual game bits, there's yeah, nothing. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you uh, what. Yeah. To be fair to them, that is something mm. that um, Remedy did quite well with Quantum Break. Is they had that oh, yeah. they had that option in the settings where you can like switch off licensed music if you're streaming. Yeah, yeah that's it's getting, getting more common. That I've I've spotted it in a few things I've streamed. Yeah, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, mm. I mean, yeah. it makes total sense. I mean, like, people aren't are going to be less bothered about wanting to create content or stream a game if you're like, well, what's the point if it's going to get blocked yeah. or yeah, 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 copyright stuff? So yeah, it, it's 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 quite an, like a uh, astute decision from these developers to start thinking about the streamers and YouTubers who want to create content. Mm. Sweet, yeah. So FIFA stream was amazing, Sean. I can't wait for the next one. Thank I'm, you. I'm well psyched. Well yeah. psyched. Um, Lindy Bailey emailed him. We talked about Dragon Quest Builders two last week. I've some suggested it, um, and she's got an email. So talking about Dragon Quest Builders two from last week, and with Sean not getting into the first one, I didn't play the first one, but I've definitely been hooked by this one. Whilst it's true that the free build element doesn't appear till much later in the game, the tutorial mode. Uh, the story islands each have a great standalone story which feeds into a much bigger story arc i've only played a couple of dragon quest games myself but whilst i'm sure this is a great addition to the greater universe i didn't feel like i had to necessarily know much more about the lore and backstory that seems to stand alone fine there's building obviously farming cooking crafting defeating enemies boss battles and relationship dynamics that you build with your two main friends and other villagers this gives you uh, this gives your creative character a real sense of being within the world with daily tasks to do not given by the game but created by the player as you start to feel a real sense of responsibility and pride when it comes to the village you're in i honestly didn't think i'd sink as much time into this game as i have um at best i think i'll complete story mode and i'll be done but my villagers need me and i'm still here building and working to complete the optional targets i agree with others that you have to put it in that i've put it in for game of the year could you put the great work uh, also, I, I, I tweeted saying that there is a demo on Switch as well. So, oh shit, okay, yeah, um, a, it sounds like we we have to try it, Sean. Yeah, we, we will promise at some point between now and December. God knows when, because fucking games are coming out now, aren't they? Oh, aren't they just, the amount. How's yeah, they? I mean, this last week is mental. I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah. It's it's great, but it's like yeah. it's gone from nothing to that. Yeah, 
Yeah, good times. Uh, and we'll yeah. end the last bit with a hidden. I think Anna last week talking about VPNs and data and security and all sorts. And basically, she says if James is serious about minimizing spying, I'd recommend getting a pie hole set up, running all home traffic for a VPN, and using Firefox on all devices. As mentioned, you can't eliminate it completely, but there are great ways of reducing the data that can be gathered. Anyone yeah. know what a pie hole is? Well, it's for I assume it's a Raspberry, raspberry Pi. Isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. people, I mean, I know people that do that who live in China that they have like a, a they run a Raspberry Pi in the UK or whatever, and then just like you know VPN into it that way. Because uh, that, okay. that's the way of doing it. Because the trouble is yeah. over there is that often popular VPNs get blocked, um, particularly during right. times of political unst- you know, instability or when they're having like a conference so now yeah. or. Yeah, whatever's yeah. going on, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I used VPNs before when I lived there, but I, I don't know. You see, I'm always a this will sound ridiculous, but I'm always a bit suspicious of VPNs as well because I don't know. They always say that they're not collecting whatever it is you're doing, but it still yeah. feels they probably are. <laughs> it's, <Yeah. laughs> it's the, the I know what you mean. You know, yeah. it's like, but yeah, no, she's right though. Um, absolutely, yeah. like, that's probably should yeah. do. Is that. this all going to bite me in the ass, big style later? Like right now, I'm like, I don't care. Like I've, I'm clearly on the internet and. Even if I now suddenly start thinking about, you know, re- somehow reducing the amount of data that can be found or tracked, or whatever, it's too late. Like, surely if you if you want if you want to be online, you just have to give that up. Am I gonna in like ten See, or whatever plus years gonna think? Oh, what, I was so naive. Like, you know, data is now more. As I said, in the great hack, data is like more valuable than gold <laughs> or some other resource. Yeah, because because what's really scary is that if enough of us start just like leaving the internet or whatever, or successfully, you know, covering our tracks then eventually a profile will exist of the sort of person who is going to do that yeah. and when. So, <laughs> mm. And then that'll just be like... I mean, obviously, yeah, you can't think like that because if you want to get out, then you just should. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I, I still think you can minimise it and it's a good idea to do so if possible. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't yeah. think it's a good idea. I just don't think it's a good idea to just give loads of data to everybody. I mean, look at the joke government we've got at the moment. I mean, you know, you've got those sorts of things like the what was it? You know, the the like the anti porn legislation they had going and all that kind mm. of thing. They they are quite stupid in terms of yep. like what they want to do with technology, and it worries me yep. that they yep. that they would have a lot of data on on citizens. So it's yeah, I just yeah, yeah, yeah. don't. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. What's happening with that anti porn thing anyway? I mean, I, it's a friend delayed. asked me the other day, so it's not. It's, was it, was no, it? it's, it's been delayed. I mean, the, the oh, okay, funniest cool. thing about that was when that was due to hit on the original Brexit day as well. And it's like, <laughs> imagine if that had happened, if we'd have had Brexit and then also the porn had been shut off. The I think pe- there would have been riots. It, like, yeah. You could see it in like, you know, in the future in sort of like uh, encyclopedias or whatever, you know, people saying like, you know, oh, those are the porn riots. You know, stuff. Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> interviewing people at the riots. Like, oh, so is it, you know, is it, are you here about Brexit? No, no, I'm here about the pornography. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was yeah that, but it's been delayed apparently because they figured out that it doesn't work. I think I was going to say they've realised it's impossible to implement. I imagine yeah. okay. it's not impossible. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really bothered, but a friend a friend asked me, so I, I will. Yeah, I'll, yeah, let, yeah, I'll yeah. let them know what's yeah. happening with it. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. it for feedback. It's at Computer Game Pod if you want to tweet us some feedback or whatever, uh, or you can email podcast at thecomputergameshow dot com. Cool. Um, right. Yeah. Not doing a funny news intro this week. Um, I imagine anyone who's been on the internet for the last week can probably guess why. Um, I'm not going to go on about it because I know it touches on things that some of our listeners will be particularly sensitive about. And honestly, the internet probably doesn't need even more men giving their two pennies on the whole situation. Um, Last week, we mentioned the allegations made by a number of women in the games industry against male colleagues who've abused them either emotionally or physically um, and how those men have managed to keep their behavior under wraps through intimidation or the status they hold within the industry. Um, one of those women was Zoe Quinn, who accused Night in the Woods developer Alec Holoka. Um, and this week, Alec's sister Eileen confirmed that despite getting support from crisis services, uh, Alec had unfortunately passed away. Um, I just hope it goes without saying to our listeners uh, that you can and should react to both Zoe's accusation and Alec's death with sympathy. Like, so many people on the internet seem to think that the two are somehow mutually exclusive, with some suggesting that Zoe should face criminal charges or... They see the whole situation as a reason to not listen to abuse survivors, um, as if it isn't hard enough for them to get justice as it is. Um, so yeah, I just, just don't fall into the trap of letting this tragedy like deafen you to the experiences of other survivors. Like actually learn about how these things happen and consider if there's anything you can do to help going forward, even if it's just listening to survivors and believing them, because way too many people aren't even willing to go that far. Um, but yeah, right. 
James, what else is in the news, please? Thank you, Sean. Um, okay. Well, Telltale Games is being revived. Oh, this is a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't There's... it isn't, right? It's yeah. sort of... Well, <laughs> yeah, it is, but yeah. not, like, in a way. <laughs> I mean, it's it's yeah. odd because... So what it is, is Telltale's assets have been bought by a company called... It's called LCG Entertainment. And mm. the company is going to sell some of Telltale's back catalogue, and then they're going to work on new games, this is what I've said, based on, like, Telltale associated properties, as well as new licences. I mean, who's going to get okay. the licence? I mean, I yeah. wouldn't, like, at this stage, but <laughs> it's a bit odd. Um, so this is headed up by a guy called James... Is it James Otterley? And Ben Otterley, uh, Brian yeah. Waddle. Uh, no mm-hmm. relation to Chris. You get that. You should get that now, Sean. Um, no, nah, sorry. Okay. Go on. Never mind. <laughs> Sky give me, give me a few more weeks, in 1990, but never mind. Okay. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so neither of them worked at Telltale before, but they both have experience with licensed games, and they've worked on like mobile games and stuff like that. And they've mm-hmm. also brought in some workers from the original Telltale on freelance contracts, and then said mm. that in the chance they'll get, there's a chance they might get full time positions later. So, I mean, that that's the part of this that I feel a bit, I'm not sure about that because. It, yeah, it feels a bit. That doesn't feel great. Like I, I understand. You know, I think they've said, haven't they? Like, well, we can't just hire everyone again full yeah. time because that's why the studio shut down in the first place. Like, I understand this is they, if they're trying to be careful about how they <clears throat> sort of regrow um, Telltale. But I mean, yeah, just offering freelance roles and maybe full time in the future yeah. is not. Like anyone who's been burned by their experience working at Telltale is surely going to stay entirely. Yeah, that's clear the thing. Like, it's more like I really hope the people who used to work there, who maybe been offered these freelance positions, have other op- opportunities that they don't yeah. have to go back. Because surely no yeah. one's going to want to go back. Mm, uh, exactly. And particularly, it's like, oh well, you know, freelance, but you maybe you'll get a full time job. It's like fuck off. Like, but mm-hmm. but hopefully, <laughs> you know, people have options, opportunities elsewhere. They don't have to. But obviously, there will be people who. Yeah, they they may not have got work uh, since Telltale shut down, and this might be an easy in to get some money on the table. But mm. yeah, yeah it, it, it it doesn't sound great. But I, I do also mm. I do also understand from the, from the company's point of view that they, they can't go mad again as high yeah, as no, they, they're, they're trying sense, to be. Yeah, they're trying to be responsible not and not repeat the mistakes. But yeah. yeah, so they've also got the rights. They got the rights to the Wolf Among Us and Batman still. And okay. they're talking that some stories might get picked up, like they may continue, but it's not looking like The Walking Dead is ever coming back. But I mean, mm. I would, I would not think that's a great idea anyway, because they that had yeah. a good conclusion uh, with what um, Skybound yeah, did to finished. it. it's been finished. I mean, it's it's yeah. done. They should leave that alone now. There's also mm-hmm. there's no news on like Borderlands, Game of Thrones, Guardian of the Galaxy, or Minecraft. Nobody knows what's happened with that. But Stranger Things, you know they were going to make a Stranger Things game yeah. with Netflix, but that's now already reverted back to Netflix now, so they don't have the rights to that. Oh yeah, shit. Yeah. So I mean, they I mean according to like these these two that are in charge now, they said the plan is to sort of stay small and still keep with the concept of episodes, but with a different pacing, basically meaning like not massive gaps between stuff coming out. Yeah. So that's probably a good idea. I mean, he he talked about he liked the idea of like how you know at Netflix they often like just drop a whole series and it's all there already. Mm. You can still yeah. do episodic, but you can it doesn't have to be like a release schedule that's staggered, does it? You know, you could just release them all yeah. in one go. Yeah, and that's interesting because if it, my first reaction to that was well, just make one full game then. But yeah. but I no, guess no one's really done the whole thing where all episodes of a game are available day one. And well, I guess you know, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, uh, have either of you either of you watched any of the Hitman stuff that um, Daniel Dwyer's been doing for No, no Clip? Uh, it's no. been really interesting. There's, they talk a lot about the the. Ep- I mean, obviously, Hitman is probably different to like Telltale stuff because it's you know, like Telltale. It's it, because it's their stuff is quite story focused. The idea of it being episodic sort of fits. Whereas with Hitman, it seemed maybe a bit of a, a weirder fit. And so yeah, they uh, like IO Interactive went in with this attitude of like we'll do it episodic, and then you know the first you know uh, episode is like cheap or was it no it wasn't free was it paris you had to pay money for it but it was point is you know it's it spreads out the investment you don't have to pay full whack for it and they're like right so we'll we'll get loads of people on board with that first episode the vast majority of players just paid for the full season up front like it just didn't work at all (laughs) so i thought that was really interesting and, and i'd be keen to see if like a similar thing has happened with telltale or um, you know, don't nod like with with Life is Strange and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 
But then also, I mean, you know, there's the lawsuit that's ongoing as well. There's like a class action lawsuit against the original yeah. company's executives, but apparently that won't impact on this new company at all. It's, it's completely okay. separate now. So I guess right. we just have to see how it goes. I mean, I'd be quite mm. pleased to see some more games because, I mean, I, lo- I love those style, that style of game, but not yeah. if it means that people are going to get exploited by this. <laughs> that's yeah. the thing that's yeah. not so good. But. Yeah. We'd also I mean, want to exploit it, but I mean, when, you know, Telltale Games, you know, Walking Devil's brilliant, and I did enjoy what I played of uh, The Wolf Among Us, and I know other people are happy with other games they released. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know, I don't, I'm not like mega pumped to hear about more Telltale games, mostly because technically they, they were never great, and that never really improved. Maybe this new, in this new era of the company will we'll fix that. You know, it, it says that yeah. one of their comments is that they'll focus on tools and technology and design in house, so maybe yeah. they do want to improve that, but. I don't Imagine know, if if <laughs> if they were sent right. We're doing Game of Thrones again, but you know. So obviously, I don't know if you played um, the the Telltale Game I of did. Thrones. It was all it was yeah, so depressing. It was, <laughs> it was <laughs> and it was all like I mean, I only played the first episode, but obviously they had to write around the TV show, right? So it was it was mostly original characters and like no one who could really impact anything. And occasionally, you'd meet Cersei and be like, "Oh, it's her from the telly." Um, what if what if they're like, right, we're doing Game of Thrones again, but this time it is. The final series, <laughs> you fucking decide what happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd no be one great. can complain anymore. Just rewrite it. That do whatever you want. very well. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie will remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they should, they should do that. It's free money, mate. It's on the table. Yeah, and, and, like, and like, episode two is basically just pitch black. You can just see eyes. Yeah, you can't so fucking can see anything. Yeah, you, yeah, can't, you, just, <laughs> you just see like X's you know, like, and A's and like, buttons to press on screen. I'm not sure what you're, what you're interacting with at all. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's a gag about the episode being very dark, but uh, you know, mm. um, yeah. I mean, but but Telltale, I'm not, you know, I, it, that doesn't get me excited. If you said, you know, the team behind Life is Strange, yeah, is doing like more stuff for well, other, other studios, but I'm like, okay, I'm I'm where I'm I'm there because I'm excited for that game. I love that game, but mm. yeah, but Matt, you I didn't don't... play any Telltale games. You only played like Walking Dead. <laughs> How do you know this? But well, because I, well, I played play a bit of uh, The Wolf Among Us, I'm just not inspired to play more. The Wolf Among Us was really good. That was a really. Good... Did you play the whole of that that series? No, I played like the first two episodes and oh. I stopped. <laughs> I mean, I, I, See, I, to I, be I, fair, I stopped, you... I stopped seeing that like, series three or four of Walking Dead. I was just like wasn't it wasn't hooking me. It wasn't inspiring me to play. Fair enough. Okay. I mean, yeah, Wolf Among Us is just a fascinating setting, isn't it? It's yeah, just such a great idea, which obviously is lifted straight from the comics, but. Um. Yeah, the Wolf I really Among enjoyed Us was, what I played of it. Was good. That was good. Yeah. The Batman releases were also good as well. They oh, were. Yeah. They were free. I mean, I actually still got the second series of that to play. I don't know if I can okay. actually anymore. Um, I don't think <laughs> yeah, it's possible. But... I've fucking deleted it. So <laughs> yeah, I should to, go back. I have to check yeah. and have a look. But they, 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 there was some good stuff that they they released like, over the time. And also, I mean, technically, especially, I mean, I talked about it on here. Like the the last series of The Walking Dead. Like the technology for that was significantly better. I mean, it still wasn't mm. as good as a lot of the other, like maybe as Life is Strange and stuff like that. But it was still very passable by that stage. But some of the stories yeah. were great. No, I'm quite no, interested. In this. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's like uh, Wolf Among Us. So I only got, I think I played three episodes, and then the fourth one just like wouldn't load, um, and I yeah, couldn't be bothered mm-hmm. fixing it. Um, and it, like obviously, and it had technical problems even prior to that. I was playing on the Xbox 360, so like every time it went into a a QTE, it would like stutter and pause and i've just missed loads of cues because the game just wouldn't let me do them so that was great yeah um but yeah but i love the setting and yeah and characters and what have you but um and yeah tales tales of the borderlands is fucking great it might be telltale's best thing never played that um, although i do own it i think because it was free i think with um i think it was like on oh, yeah. xbox you know it was with um games with gold or something like that before uh-huh. or maybe even psn it, i can't remember it's uh, yeah. it doesn't really like like I had played the first two Borderlands games, but I'm, like I wouldn't call myself like a rabid fan or anything. Um, I'm pretty sure it stands up on its own, to be honest. Yeah. Right, what else have we got? Okay. Um, well, speaking of exploitation, um, sorry, alleged yeah. exploitation. Um, yeah. this is Chucklefish. Um, mm-hmm. so did did they are they are they Stardew Valley? I've forgotten. They are Stardew Valley, yeah. Right. Okay. So what happened here is Chucklefish have issued a statement responding to multiple accusations that it took advantage of unpaid volunteers. So this was over the game called uh, Starboard. And what it is, is one of the game's writers... Starbound. Is it Starbound? Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Starbound, yeah. Starbound. Starbound. I'm sorry, it's the autocorrect. 
<laughs> okay, so Starbound. So one of the game's writers had tweeted that he'd worked like hundreds like of hours on the game, but wasn't paid anything, and he was 16 at the time. And he claims that there are about a dozen other like unpaid workers, like graphic artists and concept artists, that are also in a similar situation. So Chucklefish responded to this, saying that this is the they said this is the quote: "Everyone was credited or, renu- or remunerated as per their agreement." You see, mm. I mean that's a bit of a weird way of phrasing that. Yeah, which makes it sound like so that, well, that's basically saying no, they weren't paid. They, weren't they paid, agreed no. to not be paid. Yeah, they, they agreed to it. Doesn't doesn't mean it's not exploitative. But all right, carry on. Then we got okay. So this is the then this is they follow on. They said we're aware and saddened by the current allegations against Chucklefish regarding Starbound's early development. During this time, both the core crew and community contributors were collaborating via a chat room and dedicated their time for free. Community contributors were under no obligation to create content, work to deadlines, or put in. Any particular number of hours. So this guy then responded in saying that the deadlines were in place, and if they weren't formal, they were kind of like heavily implied that like this needed to be done or whatever by a certain time. And then he said, "I was a naive newcomer to the industry, and my trust was utterly betrayed. There is no moral defence for this." And so, I mean, I I mean, I feel this is doesn't sound very good. Like as in, obviously yep. they've probably not broken any laws, but it does sound like they've taken advantage of people that were probably hoping they'd get into the industry or whatever through doing this. Is that am I yeah. wrong about that? No, yeah, definitely. like they, there's uh, you know saying, oh well, they didn't, they were, yeah, they were under no obligation to create content. Like then don't use the stuff that they've produced if the uh, I don't know, the, yeah, this idea that like oh, but they wanted to do it is is shit. And like let's not forget. <laughs> you know, so this was this was, yeah, this was developed and published by Chucklefish, wasn't it? I know most things that have their name on they only published, but yeah, yeah, was Star was just published by them, and there's like yeah. Eastwood is also published by them, but not developed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they also they also made Terraria, right? Which it, oh, which you know. can which I would think you can get on like fucking everything. It's like insane. Yeah, um, how much? <laughs> um, like money that game has probably made so they can probably probably afford to pay a few kids mm. um for doing work for them um so yeah that's uh, pretty pretty bad see pretty I mean, bad the thing is is i mean people are obviously making their own decisions but also mm. these are kids not grown-ups either exactly and when you got you know like people who are like young and new to the industry like they've just graduated from university are open enough to exploitation never mind people who are literally 16 years old yeah so I mean, I can assume they didn't have to sign a contract, just clarifying they wouldn't be paid. Or yeah. I mean, because if, if there wasn't a contract, I can see why there may be a bit of confusion, or maybe the kids hoping that they would get paid, so on and so forth. But if this was done all above board, and like it said, okay, well, you know, here's you know the role is unpaid work, or it's this and the other, sign this, you know, there's no salary, then who would understand? But I assume that was never potentially never even spoken about. See, and so from yeah. this, it doesn't even look like there really was any kind of formal agreement with this. It sounds like they were all mm. in a Discord and they were like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you could do this for us or whatever? And then people were doing things. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, community contributors, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing, yeah. And that's, mm. I mean, it's like that whole thing that we have with the music, wasn't it? With um, that Ubisoft were trying to get people to make music for them for free and all that kind of thing, like doing spec work. It's Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, with that, that is that hit record Joe. Yeah, uh, is that company? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, guess our community to create content. Yeah, it, it's 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 this is a sort of dodgy ground. It's like I guess they felt it's probably great to lean on the community who are like passionate potentially about this project and have great ideas, but there needs to be policies in place to to make sure everyone knows exactly where they are. And, yeah, and well, this with, is it. And like to we've, how had, they could we've had paid to, or not. like we've had to deal with this because we've had you know entirely well-meaning fans come to us with like stuff they've made for the show or you know like offering to do stuff for us and we're like like thank you but no because it's just too messy we don't want to get into a situation where like especially now that we're on patreon like like you know so say you know someone had done something for us six months ago and then later on we we started on patreon and suddenly it's like well is our success on patreon partly built on the back of someone (laughs) Mm-hmm. who did work for free and it's just no yeah you just and we were smart enough to say no so yeah, i mean I i'm know. sure i'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say like, i'm sure that they probably just thought this was like a good way to get the community involved but then there is that whole sort mm-hmm. of just like or maybe they thought it was free labor you know this kind yeah. of thing which is 
that he didn't have to play. But I don't this know. Is, we, yeah, we don't and know. like you say, the you know, with Beyond Good and Evil Two, it was, it you know, the, the whole spec work thing was so weird because it it did on one level, certainly from the developers that were on stage, it felt like to them a cool if somewhat naive way of being of, yeah just being like yeah let's get it stuff in from the community that'll be really cool and we can actually pay them but yeah once you you know people looked into it and it's like oh no so like dozens of people could pitch and and have to actually make a thing and then only the thing that actually makes it into the game gets paid for and that's not good enough see also i mean um, employment now is so sort of like precarious anyway for like yeah and people are so desperate to get in like wherever they can it's just mm-hmm. it leaves like these opportunities for you know bad situations i think you yeah know, because absolutely. People and like it. and i i you know there was definitely a period of of my life where like i was like i was just working like part-time in in catering and then just picking up like freelance writing work on the side and that and, and you know, so I was on like a zero hours contract, <laughs> the, the catering job, which again is you know generally frowned upon. Like, but it it did work for me because it meant I could drop like the catering job when I had a lot of freelance on, or I could go to events or whatever, and no one was going to kick off at me because I didn't have set shifts or anything. But then I also like didn't move out of my dad's house until I was about twenty six. So, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. Mm. Yeah, swing some roundabouts. Uh, yeah. well, with, with regards to pure audience or work for free, I'd mm-hmm. like to take this moment to thank Joe for making that FIFA 20 cover. Yes. Uh, and Jake for helping out doing the designs on t-shirts a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, the two are related. I just thought, I just thought, you know, I just thought yeah, I'd yeah, in there because yeah. that just came to my mind now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, next story is that Reggie mm-hmm. is going to teach at Cornell University. Imagine Reggie being your lecturer. What's the, what's he teaching? Okay, so he's going to be... Well, it's not entirely clear, but it says he's going to become okay. Cornell's first leader in residence. Um, okay. So he graduated from there in 1983, and he's going to deliver work, uh, lectures, and he's going to work with the university community, and he's going to be teaching about... Okay, so this is leadership and conscious capitalism and service. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, Wait, hang on. So by conscious capitalism... No, that's not the same as capitalism with a conscience. Is I it? don't know. So that's, that's the way that's it's written. It's, like, <laughs> it's self-aware capitalism. I think is the the idea. But yeah, I'm going to have so, to look at what conscious capitalism is now. Yeah. So he's going to be doing that, and his first talk is going to be on the 21st of October, and it will be open to the public. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay. If anyone well, wants I'll get to get over there, well, where is it? Is it like in London? Is that's, it in like, uh, you know, that's, Leeds? That's in New York. And, uh, yeah. oh, okay, wait, sir. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I will. Uh, I'll see you there. I'll see I'd you love there. it if like he wasn't even teaching anything in particular. It's like here's a class where you can just turn up, and Reggie will just say weird shit for two hours. <laughs> I'd yeah. pay for that. Here's some like concept designs for console. Here's like <laughs> concept for the Ultra sixty four. I'd love to see him doing like you know talking about his time doing the Wii U like you know classes on how to defend the indefensible you know stuff like that. It'd be it'd be brilliant. Well, <laughs> I'm, yeah. Um, so I found at consciouscapitalism.org uh-huh. uh, quote. This is from the Conscious Capitalist Credo. We believe that business is good because it creates value. It is ethical because it is based on voluntary exchange. It is noble because it can elevate our existence. And it is heroic because it lifts people out of poverty and creates prosperity. Oh, no, 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 Free and... <laughs> goes back. Free enterprise capitalism is the most powerful system for social cooperation and human progress ever conceived. Okay. It is one of the most compelling ideas we humans have ever had, but we can aspire to even more. Yeah. That I mean, bit in the beginning about saying that it's a choice in the beginning is yep. absolutely not true at all. It's no, it's not. Is it? it's... <laughs> we have to sell our labour. We have no choice but to do that. Otherwise, we can't yep. live. It's uh... yeah, yeah. We have to engage with the system. That business is good because it creates value. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, whatever. Let's not get into this again. Um, I'm very excited to hear what Reggie has to say about this. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, is it, I mean, I, I will kind of do like a worldwide tour of his talks. Just, just, <laughs> I'll be up for that. Also, I want to get a t-shirt, like a tour t-shirt with all the dates on the back and his face. Yeah, yeah big. All right, yeah. next story is that Valve are reportedly fighting EU anti-tra- uh, antitrust charges at the moment. Okay. So what this is, is so the Valve... And Focus Home, Bandai Namco, Cam- uh, Capcom, Camcom, Capcom, <laughs> Cock Media, and uh, Zenimax have all been accused of breaching like antitrust rules, and this is because they've been preventing like what allegedly present preventing distribution of games outside like allocated territories within the EEA. 
And so okay. the argument with Steam is that the Commission alleges that Valve entered into these like bilateral agreements with publishers to region lock Steam activation keys from third party sellers. Okay. And so the others have all said they're basically going to cough up and they're just gonna like pay the fines or whatever, that that's it. But Valve mm-hmm. are intending to fight it. But apparently I mean the fines can be up to ten percent of your annual worldwide like turnover. <laughs> So that's quite okay. a lot. That, I mean, for Valve, that, that must a be a, a huge amount of money. And so yeah. I bet the EU are quite pleased that they're probably going to fight this because, um, yeah, it's kind of insane. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, given yeah, given the size, you know, on the one hand, it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's Valve. They probably can fight it. But then when you consider that, like, yeah, like Cock Media and Capcom, etc., and, and Zenimax, Jesus Christ, uh, are all just being like, yep, yeah, sorry, sorry, it's fine, sorry. Um, yeah, we, we should, implies that maybe Valve that. don't have a fucking chance. But, yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, Epic have announced eight more exclusives um, hey. for, for the Epic Game Store. So Let's harass developers again. Do you, you want to hear, hear which games you need to harass? Uh, don't do yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Don't do that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got... Is it Ooblets? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it Watam or Watam or what? What's that? Watam. I think it's Watam. just Watam. It, that's the new K- uh, Takahashi joint, isn't it? The the Katamari guy. Okay. I'm uh, excited. Then we've got the Auto Collection... So that includes oh, yeah. Adventure and Odyssey. They were good games. Mm-hmm. I quite enjoyed those. They They're were really good. Them. I don't know if I'd need to play them on the PC. No. But yeah. I mean, they were one of the last games I think I bothered playing on mobile, actually, because they were yeah, quite really good. nice and relaxing really good. and kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no Straight Roads. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is, but it's, yeah, fine. Uh, the Eternal Cylinder. Oh, that rings a bell, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> okay. Airborne Kingdom. I mean, these are all games we haven't heard of, to be fair, James. Well, no, because I was uh, hoping that Sean would have done. That's why I'm reading them out. Oh, great. You put it all okay, on me. Go on, go on yeah. Sean. Jesus Describe Christ. Well, if I'd known you were going to do this, I'd have Googled them beforehand. And I'd be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the Eternal Sander. You're doing pretty well. You've only you've only blanked on one so far. So you're doing oh, yeah, pretty but well. I'm looking at the rest of the list, and I've got nothing, James. <laughs> so, so you don't know Superliminal <laughs> or Manifold Garden? Uh, the manifold garden rings a bell, but it says it. Oh, it's somewhere between an architectural exhibit and a physics simulator. That sounds like my shit. So yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. they're only they're still going to be coming to consoles as well. So they're only going to be exclusive on PC and okay. for the Epic Game Fine. Store. But I'm sure people yeah. will be suitably angry um, about that. I right. mean, the only the, like at this point, the only way I could get upset about it is like, oh, it means they're not coming to Game Pass then. <laughs> but that's a stupid complaint to have. Like just buy the games because they're good. I'm really excited about Ooblets and and Watan particularly. So yeah, yeah. I mean, they might not be coming to Game Pass on PC, but mm-hmm. on console, or they'll be coming. That's not relevant, Matthew. <laughs> doesn't affect <laughs> it me. It's does totally it? relevant. It's not on I mean, PC. It doesn't exist, mate. How, doesn't it, um, doesn't I affect mean, me anymore either. Seems my Xbox is still broken. Oh yeah. yeah. Just do we, you need to do that USB thing anyway. Well, I do. It's just annoying. Anyway, uh, Hound. So, about, I mean, at what point are people? How much longer are we going to have to deal with people hating Epic? That's until... never going to go away. That's absolutely never going to go <laughs> away, is it? Mm. No. Five years' time, you think people are still going to be mad? Yeah, almost certainly. I think like once the Epic store is actually just better and and or you yeah, know, if it's or at least, at least it's matches with Steam. Steam's functionality, yeah, yeah, um, I think people might stop complaining. I mean, the, yeah, the, the you know the sort of aggressive, um, you know, just as we've said many times before, just throwing money at the problem repeatedly. Um, is that's not like fair competition, but it is also saving the asses of loads of nice developers. So I can't get too upset, at it. especially you know we've reached this point where yeah, so developers are getting like loads of really horrible abuse for announcing that they you know they signed an exclusivity deal with Epic, and it's suddenly I I lose all appetite for wanting to be concerned about Epic spending loads of money on on games. So I just yeah, whatever. I'd yeah, because so many stories it, you've heard, like it's like these developers, are like oh thank god that this means we yeah, we are guaranteed to be here in like twelve months time. Exactly. This game will like, definitely get funded. We will be able to keep paying our staff and do a more games. Like and yeah. then then people then just throw shit at the developers saying can't believe you signed with those guys. Well, they just want to fucking save their livelihoods and their business and exactly and and ensure that the the, comp- the future of the company. But. Mm-hmm. But also, yeah. I mean, getting these exclusives, it is a winning strategy to get people to use your platform, which is probably yeah. what Google Stadia should do. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, they haven't bothered. You know, it's like it's working though, isn't it? It's going to work for Epic because they they figured it uh, out yeah, that well, you probably, need to give people yeah. a reason to like to use the store or whatever. Even if you yeah. hate it, people are still going to do it because they want to play those games. Mm-hmm. Rather than just I mean, get... yeah, like personally, I'm I, I'm already realizing that I don't really care about a lot of the extra 
sort of functionality of Steam because I don't use most of it. I quite enjoy the Epic Store just being really sort of pared back and look, they're just big, nice images of the games and you click on them and then you play them. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I know. Okay. Oh, what else? Next story is that Bungie yeah. are adding an optional battle pass to Destiny 2. Mm. This so, is... Uh, di- <laughs> This is very interesting. It is very interesting, and I do think it's a good idea, but goodness me, as someone who's a fan of the game, I had to like read it through this a few times to make sense of it. I, you know, so this, I've, I've uh, got literally, like, I've got like lines and lines of trying to understand how this works, like the, the, the yeah. explanation of this. It's really weird. <laughs> okay, do you, do you want to go first then? And I'll, okay. If, I need, so if I need to chip in. Or, but... Each new season of Destiny 2 will have a free or paid version. And yep. the paid versions will be like a battle pass. Mm-hmm. So the first season will come bundled with Shadowkeep. So that's like yep. an expansion that's coming out. Yep. And apparently the new seasons will then change Destiny's world, Destiny 2's world every three months. So that mm-hmm. sounds like they're ripping that off from Anthem. like Because that's what the Cataclysm <laughs> stuff was supposed to be, wasn't it? Was it was supposed to be like, you know, world-changing events or whatever. But that's what they're going for. Well, this is, this but, is but, what but, Destiny's but, done... Also- that, in that happens last... in Fortnite. You know, every time there's a yeah. new season, there's some like big structural change and locations change, or get blown up or move. And so, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, it's Destiny funny. Two it's has been doing seasons for the last though. year as well. Like Destiny Two's already been doing season stuff. Like yeah. every three months, a new season begins. So, so yeah, yeah. but there's no way, no way that's an anthem thing. Anthem, you know, know, they, they <laughs> get off anthem, Matt. It's funnier like to think of it that way. <laughs> Um, anyway, so the season of the Undying will is the first one, and it's going to open mm-hmm. a Vex gate, and which will start a load of new activities. And then three months later, the players will close the gate, and then the activities, and then then like there'll be like a new season, which is going to be season of the dawn. And the whole point of this is they're talking about like removing the activities will mean that it feels like a game that's like always evolving, and it will mean that people mm-hmm. will be like, "Oh, do you remember when this happened?" Or you know, whatever you know that kind of thing. Yeah. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't. I mean. And so the whole point is to create stories against, like, so that the player base can sort of like get around that. You know, it's like these yeah. are shared experiences that we're going to having that are fleeting. Like they're going to be gone mm-hmm. at some point. Yeah. And I'm sure that's. I mean, that must that works for Fortnite, doesn't it, Matt? As far oh, as oh yeah, can massively. Tell. Like, yeah. People love that. Yeah. I mean, like, it, 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 when like you know, rusty, uh, you know, um, other old locations are blown up, and then then they come back or they're teased for the next season. Oh, I can't believe you know that, that that's back. And so yeah, that that that, that you always have like a story. For each season that you think yourself, like oh yeah, I remember that location or oh, that's gone, or but we went to the other one and now this one's back, and so yeah, this it be, it does sort of change the sort of narrative of the game just because locations come and go. Yeah, mm. I mean the only thing about it that people are probably not going to be happy about is the idea that like items that you get during that season will only be during that season and then they'll be gone. So if you miss them, you're not going to get them. It's kind right. of the idea. Yeah, 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 but I guess it. I mean that's yeah. part of this business plan, though, isn't it? Is to make people yep. want to keep playing this. So they that, can, yeah, it's yeah. that artificial scarcity, isn't it? It's yeah. like well, you've got to keep. Yeah, you've got to keep you keep you um, keep involved, or else you are just going to yeah, keep you on a treadmill for forever. sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, because I so I was really confused about the pricing because I when they said, "Oh yeah, it's getting a um, you know about a battle pass," I thought this was like separate to the season stuff, but it's not, is it? So if if you are considering getting into Destiny two at this point, here's how it works. So so there's the like the free to play version is I, is I don't know if that's out already. That's not out yet. That's, that's coming in October. No. That's, that's going to be Destiny October. two light, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, new light. Is it new light? New light. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's free to play. And then um, the new expansion. It's called Shadow Keep, which is like thirty, forty quid. Um, so that gives you like a load of new stuff, and then some new stuff throughout the year. But then yeah, and then each every three months there's going to be a new season. You pay a tenner, you get the the sort of premium new season stuff, which includes this new battle pass thing which is basically yeah so it puts you on a track um you know along which like as you complete activities and do stuff you you unlock more shit um which is fine um it's like considering they just seem yeah they're, they're, it's just something they're adding on top of the sort of thing destiny normally does mm. and it comes with you know if you're buying the seasons anyway um i i've got no problem with that at all i mean yeah i, I mean basically the reason i was addicted to fortnite for so long was because of the battle pass because really every like week there was like new challenges and it wasn't even like about getting because i think i can't remember how many levels there are on the, the fortnite one but you get up to say like i don't know say 40 or 50 or whatever it is like, and then you get mm. like this ultimate sort of mm. cool skin for your character but throughout there throughout um each like, each like the the weeks there are new challenges and that gives you more points and then you might mm-hmm 
get ex- extra bonuses along the way. Um, yeah. And ultimately, completing the entire battle pass means you have had mass, have amassed enough V-Bucks to buy the next one as well. So mm-hmm. it sort of makes sense to, to hammer it because then that means the next one is essentially free. But it, it because there's these new challenges every like every few, every week or so, I was like, okay, well, I, I, okay, I'll do this week's challenges, I guess. And then that made me play just to do the challenges. I was mostly just playing that game to do the challenges just to keep going on the treadmill. <laughs> um, and yeah. so that in Destiny makes absolute sense and it'll be brilliant, no doubt. Yeah. See, and also, I, I mean, if, even if you're going into this new with like, you know, the, the new light one or whatever it is, going, there is so much content there, like to get through. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if you mm-hmm. didn't even want to bother with the battle passes, there's so much to yeah. get through. And so, I mean, there's also this whole thing of, of ranks as well. Do you know about this? No. So each season is going to have 100 ranks. And right. if you're playing like all the time, you should be able to get through all a hundred like during a season. But right. then Bungie are trying to work out now how you can purchase additional ones. So mm-hmm. if you don't have enough time or whatever to play it, you can then pay to do this. But they're thinking mm-hmm. about doing you it. You can do that in in Fortnite. You, there's, so when you buy, there's something you can basically you can buy. You can just skip the first twenty five. Like levels, or you start at level yeah. twenty-five. Okay, but then I think you might miss out on some of the actual collectibles. Yeah, the, right. so you can what they're planning to, to skip, do with this yeah. is they're gonna they're saying they're gonna do it so that you can only do this when it's very close to the end of the season, so right. that to stop people from just like doing it. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to say this thing when you're feeling at your most vulnerable. Yeah, and basically, to yeah. <laughs> feeling, feeling you're going to miss out, and then it's like yeah. it's all right. You can pay us some money, and then you won't miss mm-hmm. out. So it's, it's pretty cynical, but you know, it's yeah. whether you want to engage with it or not. But do you think Destiny Two is way, way, way too complicated now? Do you think it's like gone the other way? Not really. I mean, I've, I, think, I mean, the I thing mean, is, like, I, yeah, they, yeah, they made you, go on. Sorry, they made Year One of Destiny Two like pretty accessible, and I really liked it. And people who play a lot of Destiny really hated it. So I feel like. Like you know, Bungie just at this point where it's like, well, I guess we just keep making it compli- more, more and more complicated, and people tell us it's too much. Um, like because until that point, like people seem to be loving it and are just willing to put infinite amounts of time into it. Like, yeah, I think they maybe reached their limit with um, uh, shit. What was it? It was the it was one of the expansions, or sorry, one of the seasons last year where it was like involved puzzles and stuff and people were just like this is literally impossible and Bungie had to just like you know unlock stuff for the community yeah. because it just wasn't happening so maybe that was that was a push too far but yeah I think it must be weird for Bungie just being like we keep putting stuff out and everyone just masters it like constantly like what <laughs> What do we need to do to just like keep them going endlessly? But I wasn't even um, specifically talking about like that in game stuff. Like it's more just okay. it, for like the person, the man on the street, or even just, like me who mm-hmm. is into games and has played Destiny. Like, yeah, I, I I've had to ask you like, okay, so what what do I need to buy if I want to play it? And like, what's this new light? Do I need well, to buy yeah, expansions? I mean, yeah. Exactly. And like, maybe maybe Destiny has just moved on now, where it's not something that if you just genuinely know games, you can generally explain how to get into mm. it. Maybe you have to really be in the community. I mean, like, I don't play WoW, never have uh-huh. done, and obviously it feels like a different language when I hear yeah. anything about that, but maybe maybe Destiny will ultimately move in that direction where you really have to be in the community and really understand and play the game to really understand what's I happening. The, I think yeah, the, being, oh yeah, it's a shooter, you know, it's like a games of service, you buy the game, you buy the DLCs, and now it's like, there's a light version, there's seasons, there's battle pass, and... I think that's I suppose, true yeah, to like the, the only The only way to really answer the question is to get someone new to sit down in front of the free version and see how it got, like takes you through it. And then how how it explains what you can pay money for. But you see, I um, I think that wouldn't be a problem because like with the milestones thing that you go through with that, I I mean I I finished the base game ages ago and then I went back mm-hmm. to it and mm-hmm. okay it did take me you know like maybe a couple of hours or whatever to sort of get my head around everything like what I was supposed to be doing but it was pretty clearly signposted what I needed to do you know to like continue you know playing on and I think it still is like that you can I still think you can play Destiny two for a very, very long time without having to pay any extra money at all anyway. And it's still mm-hmm. a very good shooter. Like, it's still yeah. incredibly fun to play. I mean, I still... Mm-hmm. These days, I've been putting it on most days, just just doing patrol or whatever, because it's just fun mm-hmm. to shoot. It's still absolutely brilliant at that. So, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think this could give it a, another lease of life as well, like this idea of the seasons, because it may... I think it definitely will. It should engage the community more, I think, and maybe even bring some people in. I'm not sure. It's... Uh, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I am really excited about this. I just wish it wasn't quite so soon. 
Like, I've just got so much stuff to play that yeah. like, if, they, if they were just like, yeah, do you know what? We're going to save it until like January. I'd be like, all right, great. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I was just thinking then, I would love to get back into Destiny. Mm-hmm. And remember last year when I suddenly thought, oh, you guys are playing it loads. I spent like 20 quid on that, like, whatever, that, the Forsaken DLC and like yeah, yeah, play yeah. for one evening and that was it. And I'm like, <laughs> I just have to realize that I'm just, if I'm doing this podcast... Yeah. I can't be playing this game because that's just going to mean every week of like, oh, so Destiny again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a shame. See, I'm but probably going to drop off as soon, as soon as the FIFA season starts again next. I'll probably drop off again <laughs> for a while because <laughs> I've only got time for like one game that's like that, like at the moment. Yeah. You know, like something yeah, yeah, that I'm going to just put money, uh, put time in. Yeah. So just to clarify, I know you might may have just answered this, but so someone can just play Destiny Two New Light, which is a free to play version, and mm-hmm. spend the ten. Uh, dollars, whatever it's going to be, on the battle pass, and then that's I'm, them. Covered. I'm not, not for everything, sure. but for I'm, a great deal of content, right? Yes, I'm not sure. I don't. Well, I don't know. Do you need Shadow Keep in order to no. buy the seasons as well? You don't. I don't, okay, think, I don't think you do. Um, okay. So I mean, that somebody will definitely correct us on that if we're wrong. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. But again, yeah. the fact that that's not clear is exactly maybe you know, a problem. Like, even that basic question is like, well, yeah, mm, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think this, will be a defi- this is definitely going to be a good thing and a shot on mm-hmm. the arm. Not that Destiny seems to need it at the moment, but mm-hmm, definitely yeah. a good thing. And it's, it's it's exciting and interesting to see how this game's evolving uh, since sort of, Bungie left Activision. It's really yeah. interesting to see where it is today or where it's going to be in the next six months or a year's time compared to where we were last year uh, mm-hmm. when they were with Activision. It feels like they've already made massive, massive changes I mean, maybe this was always in the roadmap, maybe doing a battle pass thing. It does make sense for these sorts of games anyway. Fortnite's mm-hmm. shown it, other games have shown it. So maybe it's always going to happen, but it, it's just interesting that loads of these changes are happening now. And uh, Luke Smith wrote a massive blog post about all the changes and all the things they want to do. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really exciting. Even as I, as I, I'll class myself as a Destiny outsider because I don't really play the game anymore, but it's still exciting just seeing how this game's evolving um, yeah. in light of their, like, you know, the fact they're not being owned by Activision anymore. Yeah, totally. I wonder right. if they are working well, on Destiny okay. Three. What do you think? I don't know. I, we sort you know we've talked about this before, haven't we? The, this this idea that more, what if Destiny Two just was the platform going yeah. forward? Um, I'm sure they're working it, but I I, yeah. I, I if I was them, I would not be even teasing or releasing it. Like it feels like they're they're still well, they have had many years of fixing Destiny Two, and now they're getting to the point where they're adding loads of new stuff. Let's just keep that stable and mm. and yeah. sustainable for a bit. Like the, and, any and talk about like, Destiny Three, we're just like, oh, for fuck's sake! Like, what now? We've just got into this new rhythm and battle passes, and yeah, you know, it just throws know. people off the stuff they're exactly. still making for Destiny Two, doesn't it? I mean, I mean I'd I mean, be interested. Like, yeah, I'd love to know if there is any appetite within Bungie, like either way, because like. They've made some pretty substantial changes to Destiny 2, like during its lifetime, like the way the way gear works and stuff and, and leveling up and what have you. But like have they got other changes in mind that are too big to you know, to make to a current game? Like is there anything they, they want to do with it? It's like, no, this has to be a, a new start if we're gonna do this. And that's potentially really exciting. But Good, because we'll Destiny see. Two wasn't on previous gen. That was just the first Destiny, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what, I mean, I always thought Destiny was like a, a really awesome name, and like it had, I loved the branding around the game. And I was always disappointed when I said, "Oh, here's Destiny 2. It's like, oh, we couldn't just why don't you call it Des- just keep it Destiny? Yeah, there isn't World of Warcraft two. Just call it Destiny Pro. Mm. I mean, like, what I would love is if they, if if there wasn't a Destiny three, it was just they just rebranded it. It's just Destiny. Yeah, and, and because and like, you just played Destiny, there isn't, and basically like the yeah, you know, whether it's Destiny two or three, that's more like three point oh, four point oh, five point oh, or you know, yeah. they don't have to have a number after it, and it is now at the platform. Yeah, yeah, um, and like yeah, like Warframe, that's that's how that operates. It just exactly, is Warframe, yeah. like it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, but, but I think if we were going to see a new one, it will be well, obviously definitely nothing before next gen, and mm-hmm. they would probably do a sequel because they feel like next gen could offer them something that they can't currently do. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, but, so. uh, yeah, I think any talk of a Destiny 3 at this point, it's just, oh, no, we don't, let's just keep exactly, this yeah, it make, yeah, it makes no sense for them to talk about it at the moment. But so, it would be yeah. interesting if they rebranded and said, okay, Destiny, essentially Destiny 3 is Destiny. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just one name and no numbers after it. I know, yeah, Destiny yeah, yeah. 3, exclusive to Stadia. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> mm. Jesus. Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, well, I mean, what would be worse, like, exclusive to Stadia or exclusive to the Epic Game Store? Which one would cause more of a Ferrari? Uh, Stadia, almost certainly. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's uh, 
Yeah, P- maybe yeah, PC exclusive to uh, to that, you know, to Epic Games. So I don't know how this will work. Anyway, let's continue. Um, <laughs> okay, so Yakuza Seven has been like unveiled more of it, and this is Yakuza oh, yeah, Seven. I'm sure it's more of the same, right? It's Whereabouts of Light and Darkness is the name, and it's a new protagonist rather than Kiryu. It's like Ichiban uh, Kasuga, and it, I mean the story is pretty like the usual sort of thing really it's like you know he's, he spent <laughs> spends 18 years in prison after taking the fall for his boss's crimes and then you know he comes out of prison he's been abandoned you know the whole thing and he ends up in uh, in uh, Yokohama so that's where the setting's going to be which is good okay. i mean i'm bet they end up in Kamarucho at some point I mean, at some point they're going to end up back there for you know because it's it always happens. So this yeah. is a brand new location for the first time in seven games. Yeah, I mean it's because oh, wow. the last I mean Yakuza six. Hang on, was oh, see this is the thing because I haven't played three, four, and five, so maybe it's already been in one of those. Somebody will tell me, so it's mm-hmm. it's fine. But um, yeah, I mean Yakuza six had uh, Hiroshima. Like you, you went there and you spent like quite a lot of time there. Which is pretty mm-hmm. good. So, but I'm quite excited about the idea of it being in a different location because although uh, Camarucho is brilliant, it's just nice to go somewhere that looks a bit different, you know, for a change. Yeah, so that'd be sure. good. But um, so this is this is because I I know you've corrected me on this before, and I I remembered um, after a couple of minutes. But <laughs> yeah, so when I when I first saw this, I was like, I thought they weren't doing Yakuza anymore. I thought, and then I remembered you've explained that it's. It's just Kiryu's story that came to an end, wasn't yeah, it? It wasn't yeah. the whole like Yakuza thing isn't done. It's because in yeah. I mean in the other games they have other characters as well. So uh-huh. it's like you know they the other playable characters. Like I think in five there's like a ridiculous number of people that you play as like during right. that. But this yeah that was six was the end of his story allegedly, yeah. and uh, this is going in a different direction. But I mean the yeah. big difference here is that the combat system is going to be turn based, and. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's an interesting choice because, I mean, first of all, people thought that was like an April Fool's joke or something like that because <laughs> it's always been really well known for the, you know, for the system that it has, you know, like these sort of, you know, the, as a brawler. So, yeah. I mean, it fits into, because apparently the main character has like an addiction to Dragon's Quest and they've right. even like licensed like the name Dragon's Quest or whatever from Square Enix so they can like <laughs> feature it in there. So that's kind of interesting. You know, the fact they've got this character and he can, you know, he's, he's engaging in battles in that way. I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about it, to be honest, because I'm generally not a massive fan of turn-based combat unless it's like a strategy RPG. I'm fine with it then. But right, yeah, in... whereas this is like JRPG style. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, that I'm not, not so keen on. But I'm completely willing to give it a try, considering mm-hmm. that I've played so many of these games now and it's been mm-hmm. the combat systems have been the same and it was the thing that I complained about with Judgment as well, that it was like really similar. So mm-hmm. although this is still combat, they're trying a different way. So I'm curious to see how it, how it pans out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd, it'd be interesting to see if this is like a again, if it's like a potential new like jumping on point for new people. I, I suppose, yeah, given that it's a completely different style of gameplay, they probably are hoping to get some new fans out of it. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, they've said they're going to try it, and then if people really hate it, they'll just change it back, like for, for okay, later fine. ones. But you know, <laughs> but it's it's worth a try. You know, trying something yeah. different is it's never you know, never going to be a terrible thing. But you know, that's yeah. that's kind of okay. Is so it definitely good. is it definitely coming here, or is it? I'd be very surprised if it doesn't now. I mean, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, seems to be now. I mean, you know, Judgment yeah. sold really well, like in the West, and so yeah. I mean, that's even... oh yeah. Sorry, the, the new story does say a yeah, Western release under the name Yakuza Like a Dragon is set for later in 2020. Yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. It, it should definitely happen. There's just yeah. so many of these coming out; it's ridiculous. I mean, you got yeah. three, four, and five. <laughs> There'll probably be another Judgment now as well, seeing as that sold really well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, this is a good time. It's a good time to be a fan of these sorts of games because um, you could probably just play these, couldn't you? You and could. Nothing else. You really could. And this is the <laughs> thing because I'm still going from like one to another, and I'm having to have breaks in between them because it's just <laughs> it just gets a bit too much. I mean, Fist of the North Star as well. I mean, that came out like this year. Was it this year? Mm. No, it was last year. I can't remember. It's but there's just been a lot of these. It's 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 insane. But it's nice <laughs> if you like this kind of thing. It's um it's yeah. good. Okay, last story is that Capcom are going to show a new Resident Evil game uh, ahead of um, Tokyo Game Show. And it's called Project Resistance, and mm. there's very little information about it. I mean, I've included this because yeah. we kind of, we played, I mean, Matt, you played Resident Evil 2 recently, didn't you? And you yeah. enjoyed that for, for, yeah, for what it. it was. But there's very little detail about this. All there has been is there's been some tiny, blurry images have been revealed, which seem to indicate that this is like a four player thing, like maybe like a co op. Side kind of game. Oh shit! Okay. Oh, that would pr- you see because I, I was gonna say like not being into horror games, I'm always a bit like, oh yeah, I forget that Resident Evil's good again now. Like, <laughs> um, like you know, everyone really loved um Seven and the remake of Two. Um, 
which after you know five and six went a bit funny um like yeah it, it, it's nice to remember that like oh yeah no this is a thing that is you know it's very much like you know i don't know if it's like back on top in terms of like horror games because it's not something i follow at all but like i you regularly hear good stuff about yeah yeah i mean as, as a franchise um, it's it's had like it's it's the it's the best it's been in terms of yeah. uh, how people perceive it with seven with with re2 and, and yeah. ever wanting the re3 remake uh, but yeah, yeah, because this this you know, at least on the screenshots looks like it could be like a multiplayer co op game. Appeal, you know, saying so it could be like a Resident I mean, Evil Outbreak so good. successor. Yeah, oh, yeah, I never yeah, played yeah. Outbreak. Did either of you guys play it? No. Was that the Outbreak? Was that the one that was just like a a third person shooter? No, I'm thinking of Umbrella. Chronicles. Yeah, there was Umbrella. Umbrella yeah, yeah. This was coming on PS2. It was a primarily online game, but okay. so I never played that. But um, I mean, I was up for more Resi, but. Uh, Oh, and we I, I, could stream it. We could stream yeah, it, guys. We, could. we probably could. could. And especially good things we're not getting like another Left 4 Dead ever. You know, this yeah. is like, this might be something, maybe. We'll see. Well, this is, yeah, because this is what I was going to say. So, yeah, I can't do scary games, but I fucking loved Left 4 Dead, man. Like, yeah, I think just amazing. being with mates sort of made the, the fear manageable. So, um, yeah, I mean, th- this could be really good. I mean, but uh, what was that? The. Uh... The Warhammer game, oh, uh, Vermintide. Everyone said oh, Vermintide, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you loved Left 4 Dead games, then you'll love that as well. But we, we mm. never got around to playing that. But no. yeah, new busy game. I'm well up for that. And uh, so we, in a week's time, we'll see what this is. I mean, so it seems like it's not going to be a RE3 remake or Resident mm. Evil 8. Um, but I'm well up for whatever this is. And uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like Capcom would just... They've been killing it for so long with Monster Hunter, with RE2 sales and so on and so forth. They've had like such a bumper... Year or two years, really. Now at this at this point, are you very excited to see allegations? Yeah, just just loads of stuff. Apart, apart, from that, <laughs> apart from that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So a week's time, we're going to hear more about Project Resistance. Yeah. Cool. That's it. That's all I got. Fair dues. What have we been playing? There's loads it of crossover again. It's been a again. crazy. It's yes. been a crazy. All the games have now come out in this last week. Like yeah. we've had. See, well, I mean, very little really in the last. It's, I mean, obviously, we've had things like Fire Emblem and other, other things here and there, but yeah. then we had like five games or so come out over the last, <laughs> like, you know, well, last week and then the week before we had, you know, uh, Telling Lies and other stuff. So it's been a yep. big, big old week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we need to start with Control, don't we? I think. Do we? Um, Absolutely should, yeah. We've all played this, but Matt, you've played the most. Do you want to go yeah, first? Yeah, I, I finished this game now. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 I hammered it in a week and. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think it's excellent. Um, so, how, how, mm-hmm. you guys, how much have you two played? So, I'm, I don't know, like maybe like five or six hours, I think. Okay. And James, you played much more? Uh, about the same as Sean. Okay, cool. So, Control, yeah, it's, it's a new game by Remedy, you know, the guys who did Max Payne, Alan Away, Quantum Break, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a third person. A- action game, I guess I'll describe. Although, okay, when, yeah, because I... it is it is a shooter, but it's it's got funny powers in it. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not I like mean... a straight up cover based shooter as such. No. but yeah. Uh, and again, so 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 um, it's about you take the role of this person called Jessie Faden, and and she's been led to the uh, what's known as the Federal Bureau of Control in Manhattan, and um, by this by this sort of like mysterious subconscious, she's got. Um, and so, so she's led to this mysterious building, uh, and she's also there to find to find her brother who went missing um, uh, uh, years and years and years ago. Basically, um, you wouldn't know and... that from like the first. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know that when you first no, start that's, playing. That's it, a real straight yeah. away, isn't it? No, it's not. No. <laughs> Isn't it? I no. think she she does allude to like looking for her brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah she yeah, alludes to a lot of scene. things, but doesn't give any detail whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, in, I mean, in her first cutscene, she 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 says that. Go on. What, am I cutting this bit or what? What's happening? Nothing. <laughs> What's happening? Nothing's happening. What is happening? Carry on. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> you put me off now. I, 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 is that a spoiler? I'm, I'm concerned. No, 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 like... no, it's not. But no, she, like, later on, she goes into more detail. But yeah, she definitely. I, I knew early on that, yeah, she was looking for her brother. I think that was, that was fairly clear. Yeah. Anyway. So... She's James. in this building, uh, the Federal Bureau of Control. Like the building is called the Oldest House, and there's this like um, threat inside it called the Hiss, and mm. that's seemingly like possess a lot of the staff and a lot of the the, the the people inside. And it's um, 
but uh, basically Jesse's there to to try and understand why uh, and 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 to get and to, to to get through to get through the game. The, the actual oldest house itself, it's it's just one building, but it like it 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 changes and morphs and it hides so many different locations. Uh, but 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 within this one building, it's really good actually. It's, it's really clever the way it does that. Hmm. Um, in terms of combat, yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's a sort of stand, standard first person combat, but with like you know, uh, you have this gun called service weapon, that is is just a one one weapon, but that has like up to four different states. See, so one could be like a handgun, a shotgun. One's a bit more like a Desert Eagle style thing where you, you charge it up, um, and then that gun it also has a modifications which can change um, sort of the power of it or or this and the other. But basically, there, there are lots of things happening in this game. Um, it's in terms weird of, as fuck. Like <laughs> it's very weird. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's um, weird. I've, I've gone. Oh, you know I, mean, I know. I I know what James is going to say because it's like it is weird, but a lot of that is just the game not telling you stuff early on, and it's and like and I'm all for games where it's like you and the protagonist are thrown into a weird situation and neither of you know what's going on, but there is this implication that. So your character Jesse does like does know more than you do, and she's just not saying it out loud. Like she'll be having conversations with people, and you'll hear her thought process going, "No, I'm not going to tell him about such and such yet," which is obviously teasing it for the player, but is kind of just frustrating. It's like, no, I, the person I supposedly am knows something that I want to know, and I'm just not being told it. So I, I get that. That's I mean, is that what you're alluding to, James, or am I? Yeah, I mean, yeah. can I say what I think about the first part of this game? Because <laughs> go on. Then. I mean, I okay. To be honest with you, this game is really boring me. <laughs> <laughs> in a, okay, in a massive way. Um, <laughs> there, there's reasons for that. I mean, I'm I'm uh-huh. only I'm not very very far into it. To be fair, and the thing is, is I feel I said to you before. I've said I feel like I've just walked into a film that has already been running for 30 minutes and (laughs) and I don't know what is going on because I understand that the whole point with this is that you're supposed to explore and learn more about the environment and then figure out what's going Mm. on and everything but I still feel there needs to be a tiny bit more context at the beginning as to why you're doing this to make it feel like it's worthwhile because the problem I've had so far is that I I haven't. It hasn't given me a reason to really feel like I want to really continue playing this game because I'm not finding it very interesting. Like the the narrative hooks, there are none, like hardly at all, <laughs> and so I just don't know why I'm playing this. And that that's but, the problem I mean, I've got with I, it. I would fundamentally disagree because I, I think the narrative hooks are trying to work out what's happening. Yeah, and, but you, but and... for why? For what reason? It doesn't give you a reason why you'd want to do that. Well, because it's interesting. Like, it's well, not why, though. Why is it doesn't happening? tell you what's going on. <laughs> so why would you care? Well, no, but, but, but I found that interesting. I, I love. I mean, yes, I, I do sort of agree. It's like a, a bit of a slow start, and uh, you are like, okay, so what? What am I doing? But I think the mystery of like what what, what the hell this enemy is, and and you know, and and and, and the reason you were sent there, or at least you think, yeah, you know, the, the reason you believe you've been sent there, or drawn to this place. And yeah, you know, the fact that like, the building itself like morphs and changes, and all the various like characters you meet, I I, I mean that that stuff drove me to keep playing because I wanted to find out about the mystery. I, I love the fact it was quite ambiguous, um, and honestly that that doesn't change throughout. Um, right, I I'm still left with sort of questions after I finished it, but I, I think that's fantastic, and I think I've covered it in other games that I've really liked. I, I love it when games do that because so many games just tell you everything and explain no, everything. But that's and the it's thing, I'm not expecting for a game to be quite ambiguous and I, I think there's so much mystery in this game that that was that was driving me on to keep playing so i wanted to find out more and more about what's happening and why it's happening and the, the story with inside the the building in the game but you see that's the thing i'm not expecting it to tell me what's going on i'm not expecting to know what's happening from as soon as i start the game but i would expect that it would give me a reason to care and I don't feel that at the beginning it gives you a reason to care because I don't think that the the sort of the intrigue that it sort of presents you with is terribly interesting. It's for me like I didn't feel I didn't I didn't find like the the stuff that they like that you start at the beginning like terribly engaging. I didn't I didn't feel like I really want to figure out why this building is moving around mostly because the environment I I think the environment's very boring like that you walk around in in that game. It's it's not. It's not a particularly it, like, interesting place to, to sort of walk around. There's no, a lot, no, no, of, it, lot of grey it's corridors. Office, it's massive and... open plan office building. It's sort of yeah. meant to be boring. And like the changes that um, exist within it are, are, are the interesting thing, I think. like It is a massive corporate building, and, and it shows that. 
with those are like you know um desk cubicles and like private offices and long hallways and signs on the walls it's a very boring architecturally building but it's the fact that things change inside it and there are interesting elements uh, and there are so many different locations within this one building or well, it, it really does feel like a one big cohesive boring corporate building but, but why would you the want to set a game in a boring corporate building it's a very very cohesive feel like you feel like you've gone to a you know like a governmental building but the, but there are lots of different locations within it and i feel like i visited in inverted commas loads of different areas and locations in within one building um, and th- those are very, very different, uh, d- different throughout. And uh, I-, I mean, again, I liked the sort of the combination of both the corporate government building combined with the various things you see. And it uses color really, really well. Um, there's lots of different places where it's like really vibrant reds or yellows or other different colors. And uh, yeah, I-, I thought that was really interesting. But you, you're obviously not a fan of the the corporate feel. Well, not really, but it's. I mean, also, I mean, there was stuff that I did like about it. I mean, I like the mind control stuff, like I, that whole like grabbing. You know, like when you like you start to be able to grab things, and you can just grab anything basically that's around. And if there is nothing around, you just grab a, like a lump of concrete off the floor yeah. and chuck that. I like <laughs> yeah. that. That was that was kind of good. But yeah, I also yeah. found I didn't feel the enemies I was facing at that like early on were terribly interesting to fight either. Like I thought this fine. I mean, it felt. It felt a lot like Max Payne in that sense, like in in terms of like Max Payne one and two, in the sense of like you walk into a room, a load of enemies just come in and you shoot them all and that's it. And I know that's the whole point of most games that are like shooter games, but this one, but they have to feel good like with that. And I didn't feel that this felt <laughs> particularly satisfying um, to do that. But again, that may just be me. I mean, I need to give this a lot more time because I've only played it for like what six hours or whatever, which is not very long. And maybe maybe my feelings will change about it. I'm hoping so. It's just I think that... it's only about twelve to fifteen hours long, isn't it? Right. I okay. don't. I mean, it, it probably took me like fifteen to twenty because um, okay. I heard it was like a ten hour game. Yeah. So yeah, when I sort of start playing it on like last Wednesday or Thursday, I'm like, well, brilliant, it's be done by the weekend. And I was, you know, I was up like ridiculously late on one evening. Last, uh, I guess it was like Friday or like, and I was like, okay, it'll be finished soon. It'll be finished soon. I was like, oh no, I'm still going. Uh, so it took me yeah much closer to like f- well probably fifteen to twenty I, I don't know what the clock is but I think I just, it sorry, just the ten for, hours for anyone, I was told for anyone listening who's really paying attention I just said twelve to fifteen hours and then when Matt said ten I said yeah that's what I heard as well uh, complete nonsense I just <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah I think the thing for me is I don't think the sort because of, it's a bit of a Metroidvania right it's like an open it's sort of an open not open world yeah, but kind of ish I mean you're free I to explore well. it but like. You know, I'm walking around and like the Metroidvania games have, have made great strides towards like, you know, not giving you that feeling of like, oh, here's an obstacle that I can't pass. I must have to come back here with a new a new ability later. Um, whereas this is like, this door requires key card level four <laughs> and you've only got two. And I'm just like, I I don't. I don't care about opening those doors, right? I'm not memorizing. I'm not thinking like, oh shit, I should come back here when I get a level four key. Um, because I know that all that will be behind it is a box with some materials in it and maybe a text document to read. Um, yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm not I'd like... It was Metroidvania-ish too, but I, I didn't get that hmm. vibe at all. Um... Yeah, I just, I, yeah, like it, it doesn't lean into it too hard. I just, I do wonder if it would have been better served just as a, like a, a more linear game especially like there's a couple of bits the bit where it tells you to go to the it's like oh we need to get the main elevator working so that we can get to the other sectors so figure out how to get to the maintenance sector so you can get the elevator working i must have wandered around for about an hour trying to figure out how i was supposed to get to the maintenance sector turns out you use the lift that you're trying to fix which (laughs) Yeah, the map because it is... turns out it can go to the maintenance sector, but not any of the others. But and I don't yeah. think that was explained very well. The map I, is. I am um, basically. I, I think this game is excellent, but mm-hmm. there are mm-hmm. some massive, massive issues of it. One of mm-hmm. which is navigating the yes. environment. I, I also, yeah. I can't remember where I tried to get to, but I, I also struggle for ages to try and get to a certain place. Yeah. And like the map is terrible. So, the so map is the really building, bad. Yeah. There are like multiple levels of this, this building, of course. Yeah. And and you see this map. Uh, you can go. You can pick up the map screen whenever whenever you want to press a button and um yeah. it doesn't really explicitly show the levels so you might think okay i think mm-hmm. i'm here but no i can't because there's a wall in the way or 
I think I should try to get into like, into security. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I'm here. Oh, there's there's wall. There's literally no way of getting through this thing. Like I can't mm-hmm. get through here. I, I I tried up and upstairs, downstairs, and yeah, basically there was a lift somewhere that went to like a level floor, but it's not explicit. Mm-hmm. And I, I got lost lots and mm-hmm. a bit frustrated trying to find different areas. I think that, yeah. you know, that's, yeah, that's but actually you think um, I mean, enough people actually complained about that. The remedy have said that they are going to fix that in the next patch that's due oh, okay, to drop soon cool. oh, okay, because right. loads of people have said that the map is rubbish and it's. Yeah. Not easy to know where you're going or need to go. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm slagging it off. Uh, I'm being unfair. Like, there are a lot of things I, I really love about it. Like, aesthetically, it's incredible, and I don't just mean it looks nice, although it certainly does. Um, it's just like the visual effects and the audio. I'm like just seeing and hearing things that I have not seen and heard before like the, even just down to like you know the the weird sort of wispy effect when you kill a, an enemy um mm-hmm. yeah. just this, this yeah, weird sort of oily excellent. discolored smoky like it's it, it, beyond description i've never seen anything like it um and yeah and like the sound design is absolutely impeccable like it, it's it's just absolutely stunning um the like some of the, the world building stuff like so like matt says it's it's this interesting juxtaposition between a boring open plan office and oh, you're in this ancient sort of magical building that like sh- you know changes shape all the time. So there's like posters up, like really sort of typical boring like you know office posters being like, if you're late to work because the building has changed shape, you can't <laughs> count that towards you your overtime or whatever. Um, yeah, stuff I, I, like I, that. I think one of them was like employees can get lost due to the changing shape of the building. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I literally got lost because of the bad map. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, yeah, the, the sort of the combination of the, you know, the sort of really weird stuff and yet the, just the, the absolute mundanity of just that being an office, you know, like an admin worker in this, this insane building. Um, like that stuff is really well done. Equally, um, you know, a lot of the, you know, the sort of bits of like, you know, um, like documents and stuff you can find lying around. Um, like a lot of them are genuinely quite funny. And again, just this, these sort of really interesting, sort of often quite funny human takes on the, the realities of working in this, this bizarre space. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't I, think I, I found it. I don't think I played a game where I've actually wanted to read every single line of yeah. these like collectibles things you, you, you find around the world. Like, I felt like the, the, those almost delivered more of like the world building than the actual story itself yeah you, you feel yeah. like you needed to pick up everything and read everything to really give context to where mm. the story was going and why certain characters are doing certain things i mean i think they're yeah. over like a, over whatever 100 thing uh, documents or presentations memos notes mm. to pick up around the world and all of those i i had a joy you know reading every one of them i thought i didn't get bored even right at the end i was still it- happily reading those yeah, it does break the pace a bit because you're finding so many of them that it's like literally, you know, every sort of like between fight, like, you know, like combat bits, you know, it can be like every sort of couple of minutes you find another piece of paper. And it's like, oh, let's pause the game and then go and read this. Um, but yeah, but they are worth reading. So uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be complaining yeah. about that. I I mean, guess. There's also like, it's like, did you, have you guys seen any of the, um, the sort of the, the strange dark sort of children's show? which you can Ooh, watch on no. TVs around. I because mean, I never played Alan Wake or Quantum Break, but those were though didn't I mean I know Alan Wake did had like a, had like an in-game television show, didn't it? It did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then this does that as well. So there's like it's um it's what what what's that um oh, I should remember the name, but uh, is it don't 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 look no, there's something I'm not scared or something. Oh, what, don't hug me, I'm scared. Yeah, don't hug me, I'm scared. It's sort yeah. of that. I mean, it, it's basically two sort of hand puppets, uh-huh. and um, and uh, you, you find there's various TVs, and and I think it's like a VHS like play. You find around the building, and you press play, and it like it's two hand puppets, and one will say to the other like, "Oh well, um, my uh, my mummy has disappeared," and it's like, "Oh well, your mummy is probably gone because of this," you know. And basically, it's like it's talking about quite dark, to- quite dark mm. themes, but we've done with like, mm-hmm. two hand puppets and stuff. Uh, right. I, I, I absolutely love. <laughs> I actually love <laughs> that sort of stuff. I thought it was really, really well done. And there's yeah. also tons. There's like um, another character um, where you see he's done those like videos, which will yes. you'll be like in the game, but you'll watch the video like a, a, a natural like person acting at a video. And mm. I, I, I love watching them as well. I thought that those are really, really nice in various mm. locations and it, and just to see like the performances. I think this game are fantastic. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. like uh, um, yeah, you, you playing Jesse. I mean, like, the, the voice acting is fine. It doesn't do an awful lot, but it's the other characters that mm. you meet. Um, and I guess I'm not, I'm not going to name them, but there are some really amazing characters. What one one in particular? I'm still thinking about now. Like, there's so many more things I want to know about this one particular character. Mm. Um, it, it's one of the guys you read right, uh, right at the beginning, but there are. I think the performances oh, yeah, yeah, are yeah, great. Yeah, yeah the yeah. performances are great for the characters. They're really interesting, yeah. and there's so many more questions I've got about about them and about what they're doing there. Yeah, um, I had another pretty magical moment. Um, it's like, <laughs> so there's just, you know, there's like those little sort of safe rooms you find dotted around and occasionally there'll be like radios or tape recordings or whatever yeah 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 the uh, the, the shelters you can open yeah um so you open this one shot and there's a radio and i just turned it on and it started playing a song and i like i'm i'm a fucking snob when it comes to music right but (laughs) and i was sort of walking around this this little safe room trying to find like you know if there's any documents or whatever and i was like this song's really fucking good like it was (laughs) um it was just this sort of really excellent, like sort of math rock type stuff, and I was like, "What is this?" I want to. <laughs> and then I looked, looked round, and just above the radio, there was like a gig poster for a band called Socks and Ballerinas, and I was like, "I'm gonna have a look on Spotify." And yeah, and there they were, and they just—I don't know oh, if brilliant. it's like one of the developers' bands or something, like. A, um, but yeah, they're on Spotify, and like all the songs have less than a thousand listens, and they're fucking great. Like oh, awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that was a nice little moment. Yeah, I turned a few um, Raiders on and heard music, and I thought it was like yeah. a really nice touch. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what else? Uh, yeah, like, like what, 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 I think. What, that... what, what, what do you what do you think about the combat in the short? Because uh, James, you said you're not a huge fan, but what, oh, what do you was, think? Of the I combat? said it was fine. I think it's okay. I, I didn't. I'm not not saying it's bad. It's not. Yeah, I'm not like in love with it. But then I haven't got all the abilities yet, so maybe that you know yeah. that, that sort of gets better. I've got like you know the the dash and the telekinesis and stuff. Um, like yeah, it, it's okay. I'm not too bothered. I've I've considered. I don't. I don't. I can't. I haven't looked at the difficulty settings. I have wondered if I should just knock it down to easy so I can plaster well, it. Well, but... there aren't any. Ah, okay, fine. Because I <laughs> was uh, um, finding it fine this game, and then. Right at the last section, it gets, well, at least for me, got incredibly tough. Okay. Um, I'd already at one point had to stop playing like the main missions and do some yeah. side missions to like increase my, like, there's like a massive skill tree, mm. excuse me, where you can upgrade things like the, the amount of energy you have to do your sort of kinetic energy, kinetics or moves yeah. or your shield. Um, and, and you can basically upgrade it, every one of your abilities. And uh, I was like, you know, when it, which, which, with each mission you complete, you get some of those control points, you upgrade mm-hmm. any of your abilities that's fine but at one point i was like i'm just getting like slammed by these enemies so i had to then do like two or three side missions even mm-hmm. side missions at that point were really difficult <laughs> i was mm-hmm. really struggling one of which i got to like quite far in the side in the side mission but i just had to stop because i couldn't do it anymore so i'm like hey, if i'm struggling at like, the main game missions and now i'm struggling to actually finish the side missions that would help me get more points to do the main game I was like, oh god! It, it felt like for me that there was a bit of a difficulty spike right at the end, but maybe that's just yeah. me being rubbish. But, it's um, also a bit weird how like the enemies have levels, and the higher level they are, the stronger they are. Fine, but like because the the player character and their and their abilities don't exist on that scale, you kind of you go into new areas. And it's like, well, these guys are level three. I am finding it quite tough, but am I just supposed to find it quite tough now, or am I like I don't know what. What le- like I don't know what level I am, therefore I don't know what level, like you know. It definitely you, felt like there were areas where if you went to an area where there's like really high level enemies, yeah. then that wasn't an area you should be at this point. Yeah, it yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. yeah. There's a couple of bits. I'm like, okay, well I'm just getting destroyed here. I'm yeah. gonna do some other thing because mm-hmm. th- maybe I'm not meant to be here yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I thought I thought the combat was was good, and and and, mm-hmm. um, and when you get all of the other various like. Um, uh, uh, various abilities to your service weapon mm-hmm. I think there are like four I think there's maybe four in total and then you also get mm-hmm. loads of your own like abilities for your person uh, and yeah. the, the combat I think, I think it's fantastic because it, there's, yeah. there's one different types of enemies where you need to attack them in different ways and you're juggling your own various like move sets to deal with the various enemies and sort of like because it's that thing it. of like yeah because it, it's you have to sort of constantly cycle your abilities, don't you? Because you, you know, you have like a certain amount of energy and a certain amount of ammo. The ammo automatically recharges, but it takes a bit of time. So you constantly like, right, use the gun. Now use powers. Now use the gun. Now use power. And yeah. it, and that that sort of little 
you know, little cycle works really well. I like the fact um, it was unlimited ammo. You just have to wait for it yes. to like sort of uh, uh, refill and recharge. I wasn't yeah, yeah, like, okay yeah. trying to find ammo everywhere. I like the fact it was that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and like, so as well as your service weapon having four different states and you can only like equip two at a time so i was mm-hmm. constantly changing between like the one that's like a handgun or the shotgun or some other ones you get i was constantly changing those depending on sort of the enemies or area i was in you mm. also have your own person you also have your abilities and you can use you've got you can use any of them at any point but mm-hmm. you also have your own personal mods and those sort of dictate how much energy you use when you deploy certain abilities or if mm-hmm. you have extra life or less life but faster and I was changing them around a fair bit as too, depending on the enemy. Yeah. Uh, and, and and you get absolutely shitloads of them, so it can be quite complicated. And you also all of them also have different levels. So you can get like level one, two, three, four, and ultra, and all sorts of stuff. But mm-hmm. I, I I love the fact you can like really create a play style or a loadout depending on the enemies or your style of gameplay. Yeah, you see, because I'm still at the point where I can only have like one mod <laughs> at any time, so I'm still sort of feeling fairly limited but I, yeah if that stuff opens up later on then that, that's exciting i think like the the main thing for me is there are a lot of things i admire about this game and, and one of the things is like how successfully it establishes this like just this weird tone in general and this sort of slightly sort of head fucky mindset that it puts you in like but i i don't find that particularly enjoyable it's like I really respect it, and I think it's it's an amazing like how like all yeah like I say just all these sort of weird elements of the game all the way you know all like from the fact that like you pick up a gun and it makes you the director of a government bureau to the <laughs> the fact that like the people who've been possessed uh, possessed by the hiss are just kind of floating around in the air but in these just slightly creepy ways, um, it's all so unsettling and. See, and it, it is I, amazing how it achieves that, but I, like, personally, like, to me, that's not fun. And that's not a criticism at all. That's just, I think this is one of the reasons I am struggling with it a little bit. But, sorry, James, you were going to say something. I mean, that's <laughs> where I'm at with this. Like, I can appreciate <laughs> that. I just yeah. don't find it terribly interesting at the moment. But then uh-huh. it may just be because I'm not in the right, I wasn't in the right sort of, you know, you know, sometimes you have to be in, like, the right sort of mindset to play certain games yeah. and maybe I'm yeah, just not yeah. in the right mindset for it at the moment so uh-huh. I will continue and uh, see yeah. if yeah. I begin to enjoy in it more in terms of it being weird I mean I've heard it, it, like I've never seen Twin Peaks mm-hmm. like is there, any, is there like anything Twin like Peaks. Oh. No, okay, cool. <laughs> Twin Peaks makes more sense like it really does <laughs> as in they, they Twin give Peaks you... is all like weird and mind fuckery and you don't quite know what's happening or, it or, is or, but they like, give so... you they give you more to go on than this does at the beginning. I mean, I'm sure yeah. that this opens up more as you as you play. But James, have you been reading any of like the things you pick up on the way? It's just not okay, very. Cool. They're just not very interesting though. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought I thought it was all. I thought it was interesting, but I guess it's just a difference of opinion. Yeah, I, I, I get I, it. I, yeah, like I, a lot of it is so lacking in context. Like it's all referring to characters you don't know about yet and stuff, and it's like oh, Trench said this, but what's Johnson going to think about that? And it's Steve, like, great, oh, and you. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, I've, what, what? I've no. You know. Not only that, but some of these notes are also like heavily redacted. So there's also loads yes. of like a black bits where like it says, and then you know, black space did this, and I can't believe you know black space did that, or and yeah. then we saw the black space. It's like so even the notes which can be quite ambiguous and talking about things you haven't seen or people you haven't met are then also redacted in places where which someone in doesn't like, make any sense decipher. because these are these are documents lying around in the office where they were created so there's everyone just typing things out and then looking at what the, the print out going <laughs> oh actually hang on where's, me mar- <laughs> yeah, where's my marker pen and like even um, oh I've forgotten a name her the, the character who's like your main sort of ally Emily um, Pope the, the advisor yes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like she's She's writing reports for you, and there, there's still redacted elements on them sometimes. Mm. And you're just like, eh, whatever. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, that was um, that was odd. But... Yeah, but she's also got seniors and stuff, and like, and and, and like some yeah. stuff with yeah. So yeah, but you're but the I, director. I, I, she, she's a fantastic character. <laughs> she is. She's great. Yeah, she's yeah, she's really good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, and I, you know, I like the again. They they don't make a lot of sense, but the weird sort of visions you get from Trench, the previous director. That, um, yeah, I did enjoy that. I thought that was, see, that was yeah because good. they're they're so like oh yeah so this is what happens when you're fully immersed in this world for like thirty years <laughs> like you are fucked <laughs> like there was a I tell you what there um, was a stunning visual moment with that actually when you go you know mm-hmm. when you there's that where there's the uh, what's called the telephone ringing for the first time yes and you like go down that corridor 
and then you've yeah. got oh, that I, yeah that's silhouetting up great. the hotline. Yeah, that, that was yeah, very yeah. good. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're suddenly like a, a, a what? A mo- like, looks like an old timey motel, and like to get there, yeah. there's these various like light switches. Yeah. Where you like you, you you pull it three times, and suddenly you're transported to this. It's got a name. It's like something casino and motel, not the Arctic mm. Monkeys album. It's got like another name. <laughs> and then you there's like, there's like a mini puzzle in there to try and work out what's happening, and then you mm. you but you go into a bunch of them different things. And yeah. I thought all oh, those are really interesting. I, I loved how it suddenly went to like this weird puzzle mode. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I, I also love like the, the really massive type you get when you go into like, a new area. Yes, it was like big, bold, big, bold white letters like bang. It's, like, yeah, it, it's you. great because in terms of like you know sort of visual design for video games, it makes no sense. It's really bad because you can be running down a corridor and then like fuck, I can't see anything. It's big fucking text in the way. Yeah, but it does but look it's, cool. It's and, yeah, but it looks cool as yeah, fuck. It looks like, cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah. So you just yeah, you let it go. It's fine. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think this game's excellent, but it, performance-wise, mm-hmm. it's, at, it's one of the worst games I've played in memory. Really? See, I've, um, so I've been playing it on the PS4 Pro. It's been there. okay. There's been a couple of stutters, but it's. But I have heard, yeah, like everyone's been like having real problems with it. Yeah, so I'm playing on the One X, and um, okay. I mean, most powerful it, so, console on earth, guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's sh- shocking, basically. Um, really? When you pause the game. And go into when you can pause and go to a menu, and you do that a lot. Be it yeah. maybe you're changing your like weapon mods or your own mods, or you're mm-hmm. looking at the map or looking at challenges or whatever. You know, there's um or t- the task objectives at hand. You're in your menus a lot. I found anyway. Yeah. And when you unpause, there's like a noticeable say two second lag, Ooh. whereby if you like, hey, you unpause and you go forwards, the game will it won't lock up, but it will basically go framey or almost in that like single digits. Jesus. So what you would have to do is, well, I'll unpause it and not move my character for two seconds, and then move, <laughs> and it was fine. Because if, because yeah, I, I would if I went to move straight away, it'd just go like, uh, 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 and then. Um, mm. But also, sometimes, uh, um, maybe it, it'll be around where I pause. But it basically, it's, it's so laggy that it would like get me killed. Um, there was right. like an ability later on where like you can basically like um, an enemy can fire a rocket at you, and you can like grab that rocket and throw it back at the enemy. Yeah. I barely did it because every time i did it the game would like freeze and i and i'll basically get killed like there's, like there's literally no way of, for me working out the timing the correct timing of catching that rocket and throwing it back at a person because the game was like you know just like mm. really struggling performance wise mm. um, it was it was really bad for i mean but it wasn't enough to to make me not like the game but performance wise it's it's shocking really at a point and i, I guess i got used to it t- towards the end but it's that's interesting. Um, not good at all. Especially on the One X, you expect all better for these sorts of consoles. Yeah, but yeah. the game is doing a lot of stuff. Like you can pick up yeah. anything in the game right? with your abilities. You can see anything in front of you, be that you know, like something on a desk or a desk itself. Everything, every single object. When you like hover your cursor over it, there's like a white outline to signify that you can pick that up with your abilities and chuck it at enemies or do whatever you need to do. Like literally every single item. And um, and if you're looking at a place where there's no items and you press the the button to to basically uh, pull and, and push something, it rips out a bit of the building, so a bit of the wall. Um, and so I feel like there's like an absolute shitload of um, things happening like computationally behind the scenes mm. for you to be able to like move and rotate and throw and grab every single object possibly, and also like you know destroy the, the environment itself. So. It feels like it's really struggling <laughs> on these yeah. on this generation of consoles. I bet it's yeah on PC it's probably a different story, but, but yeah, because the PC version Xbox uses all the bad. new RTX shit and everything, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well? I've heard Digital Foundry say it's like a fantastic example of what RTX can do, and yeah, but I mean yeah. it's stunning on consoles as well. It's not like um, oh yeah, I, I think yeah. it's it's a gorgeous game. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I thought it was absolutely excellent. There, there, there is one bit towards the end which is so. So fucking cool! I can't, I can't wait to talk to people about it. Um, I guess I, I'm not even going to give it its name um, right. because it may have spoiled it. It probably isn't. It's just a random name. But mm. there is a bit towards the end which um, combines like music with really cool gameplay, and mm-hmm. it's just it's, like, it's just a really fucking cool bit at the end. Um, yeah. I think for like podcasts or shows that do like best moment of the year, I, I, I think that this will be up there with one of the, the coolest things you can do. Um, it, it felt very Max Payne. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I think it's worth it for that. Yeah, the, sto- the story, I, I finished the game. I'm still left with lots lots of questions, but 
like I've covered on previous things like films or books or games that do that I absolutely love I, I mm-hmm. love sort of being left with more questions than answers yeah, uh, yeah totally. I would love to see another control game uh, I think there's so much more to do in this universe and uh, games with this sort of weird vibe I don't think there's enough of them out there and mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah I was, there's, uh, some, yeah, I was a big there's something to be so willfully weird and but with like but with the budget that this has had that is that is a rare thing and it's worth yeah. celebrating because it feels kind of it, so many times it felt like i was playing a 360 game in like yeah i don't it just feels quite old school in some regards mm-hmm. uh i can't quite put my finger on why but it feels like an old school game that looks modern with like you know a crazy story crazy characters like it's like, sometimes i was thinking like how does this game get made like it's you know, it's, it's so many games these days are like, okay, let's just put another sequel out of this safe game. You know, and like th- this game feels anything but safe. It's just, it's quite yeah. out there. It's quite weird. Mm. And I absolutely loved it for it. Mm. Fair dues. Uh, and I hope you two do, do stick with it and play more. Cause, um, well, I think probably what I'll do is basically I'll, I'll wait until this patches out that fixes the <laughs> navigation and stuff. Um, and, then, and then go from there, I think. Um, because I really, and here's a neat segue for you, really want to play Astral Chain. Because I've only <laughs> played like I've only played about half an hour of it, and it seems pretty fucking cool so far. Yeah. Um, but how, like, how much time have you guys put into it? I've played it for about three hours or so. Okay. Yeah. About I've you, Matt? probably done about one hour, and I okay. I haven't played ne- a, a platinum game before, so I'm oh, incredibly shit. confused. Yeah, I'll bet. Okay. Incredibly confused. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you, you go away and, and tell us what this game's about because I have questions. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this is quite unlike anything they've done before. Like, yes, it is still a melee combat game, but it's all about yeah, you, you've got this. Um, what's it called? Legionus, Legion, something. Uh, the the um, legions, yeah, 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 something. legions, yeah. This 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 creature that you have on it, literally on a leash, and you can sort of control or it chain. as well, and or chain, sorry, yeah, um, and you can do loads of cool shit with it. But I've not really got into that yet because I've done the training section and that's pretty much it so james do you want to talk about this one or yeah i mean i i see i felt like the complete opposite of control with this because yeah. I, this grabbed me as soon as i started playing it because yeah. i just i mean straight in it's got like ridiculous like anime style plot and all that kind of thing but it kind of works i you know i mm-hmm. thought it was that was like absolutely fine but i mean the combat in the beginning felt i said it then i've just said in the yeah. beginning in the beginning <laughs> But yeah, the combat in the beginning, I said it again, seemed a oh, bit simplistic <laughs> compared with like Bayonetta and stuff. But then you realise after yeah. a while that it's all about controlling the train and that yeah. basically it's about using two... You're playing two players at once, like at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the hook of it. And once... I mean, one of the things that I thought was quite good is that the tutorial does do quite a good job of breaking everything down so that it's very understandable. Yeah. And it does work, but it does start to feel a bit fiddly when battles get really intense and there's loads mm-hmm. going on at the screen at the same time. I mean, also this game looks incredible, like in terms of yes. like for a switch. I mean, I don't want to say for a switch game, but considering the chaos that is going on sometimes here and how fast everything's moving and it's mm-hmm. not like dropping frames or anything like that. And also, my switch is not like making terrible noises either. Like recently, <laughs> a couple of games I played, like Fire Emblem, yes. and also Little Nightmares, which I've just I'm going to talk about in a minute. Mm-hmm. Both of these games made made the fans on my Switch just go mad like all the time. But for yeah, some... Fire them definitely, I definitely heard that. Yeah, but this doesn't for some reason. It seems to be not doing that. I mean, maybe that's a worry. Maybe it should be. I'm not sure. But it still works very well. I mean, once I figured out how you know how you use the chains to like chain up people, and yeah, then you can like you know work together to you know with the with the Legion to like do it. It's 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 pretty good. But it's just I did like the way that everything. Is explained that it's very detailed about the way it does that, and I've been also. I mean, you haven't. Have you either? Well, okay, Sean, have you got as far as getting to the city yet? Like where you're doing like detective stuff? No, not yet. No. Okay, because that's quite good as well. Like, because you, I mean, the first one is very simplistic. Like you, you walk around, and then you have this system called the iris, where you can yeah. like you press like the the. Uh, what's called the cross, you know, the plus button or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it brings up like a computer overview, like display where you can like zoom in on stuff and you can like identify what things are and who people are and stuff. But then the whole point is to try and use that to solve like small mysteries that are going on. Like why right. is that drone crashed up there? And then you can like see the trajectory of where it's come and how it's been shot by something. Then you've yeah. got to try and like hunt it down and things like that. So there's all like these like little sort of like side missions that are going on within the bigger story as, you know, as you're sort of, uh, you know, sort of, um, 
going through it. But it's, I mean, there's also, I mean, there's very early on, there's like a big thing which happens, which like changes the whole dynamic a bit. And it's just, it's just very, very engaging, I found. Um, particularly, yeah, visually, it's it's very, very enjoyable. But I mean, I just, the only thing I didn't like about it was it's just the, the combat, the, it doesn't feel, to me, it doesn't feel terribly satisfying. Like, you know, with Bayonetta, one of the brilliant things with that was like chaining combos together and like, you yeah. know, like smashing something up in there. And then like, it really felt like you're really connecting like with your kicks and stuff like that and like shooting. Mm. This didn't feel like that so much to me. But then I guess that's because really it's all about manipulating the chains, which is a different kind yeah. of mechanic. Yeah, uh, because I, I, I was a little bit disappointed when I realized so when you like, you have to like switch to the gun like yeah. manually and then it just fires in like, like bursts doesn't yeah. it it's not like bayonetta where you use it as your combo extender so you can be you know like mid combo whatever and then just hold any of the attack buttons and she'll just like you know stick in, in place and like start shooting with the guns and yeah like or, or like devil may cry as well um so that felt weird but i guess yeah again it's that's just me not uh, i've not got in far enough i don't really like fully get all the stuff you can do with the the legion yet so no, I, I'm really excited to play more of this. Like I said, I've only played a bit. And like, you know, considering, yes, yeah, like you say, you sort of, you feel like you're making excuses to like, oh, well, it looks really good for a Switch game. But like considering I played this off the back of Control, which as we were just saying, is like doing so many cool things visually that like it's actually a struggle for a mm. PS4 Pro and an Xbox One X. The fact that I'm like going to Astral Chain and just being like, wow, this looks great. Like, yeah. <laughs> not even you know no mitigating sort of oh considering it's on a handheld like it just looks fantastic it's got a style like the lighting and like you know the sort of like the the sort of wet roads at, at night and stuff with all the you know yeah. the light bouncing off it. it looks incredible See, um and that's the thing because i mean i would say i mean control obviously looks better but i would say yeah. this is a yeah, lot yeah. more visually interesting though like what's going mm-hmm. on here it's mm-hmm. yeah I, I found it more much more entertaining yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm. I think what I'll probably do is like smash Astral Chain and then see what happens with this patch for Control and then, mm-hmm. um, and then get Control finished. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So with Astral Chain. So I haven't played a game like this before. I haven't played Devil May mm. Cry or Bayonet or anything like that. That's insane, I've, um, by the way. That's... Yeah, <laughs> I know. And I've got Devil May Cry Five. I actually started it on over the weekend, but then uh-huh. I thought, hang on, I should just get Control. Something else finished, so I yeah. quickly turned off and played that. But um. Yeah, so I haven't played any of those games or anything like this before. I've obviously seen what games like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta are like, mm-hmm. but never even partaken really. Um, mm-hmm. And I, on this, I got through to like the I've, I've done that like the, the bit up to where you get into the office, basically. So I've done yeah. like the tutorial section. Okay. And um, I like, I know this is going to sound like the independent review, but it sounds like a lot of button mashing. Now, what happened is, <laughs> what happened is, I think, um, I guess it's like. Maybe before, maybe when you like can set the name of your character. I'm not sure if that's before tutorial or after, but basically, there's a bit where it says what style of gameplay do you want. Yeah. yeah. And um, maybe that's when you get into the office. Anyway, regardless, I'd already played a bit already at that point because it starts you off straight away within gameplay. And then in the end, it's like, okay, choose your character, design that person, and then you choose your thing. And then basically, there's like the options of um, like, I don't know what they're called, cool, but essentially, one was like, you've never played one of these games before, and I chose that. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's going to be a mistake. I think I'm going to have to change it because after I like did another level or another section, I didn't, there was no grade after it. There was nothing. And apparently the grades only happen if you go to the other difficulty. Platinum I guess standard, I must have yeah, easy yeah. mode. Yeah. But I, I mean, think when yeah, I read the like... description for standard, it's like you're an experienced gamer of this game type. And I'm like, oh, I've literally never played one in my life. So I'll choose the one below that. But there's no grading. And it feels like, honestly, the difficulty I'm playing at, whatever it's called, casual or whatever, yeah. that it is just keep hammering that button until the enemies die. No, and I want really to like actually, that. yeah, I, I want to actually understand what these games are about. So I think next time I play it, which will be later, uh, today or tomorrow, then I will yeah, I'll change it to diff- next give difficulty up. I guess I mean I'll see the, how uh, you descri- go because, because I think literally. the the simp like the simple combos and stuff, I think that is just a thing in, in the early game, right, James? I think it does it not it opens up a bit later on? It does, yeah. And especially okay, yeah, when when you figure out like how like with the training system and everything like that, you yeah. there's a lot more to it. Yeah, so I don't yeah. necessarily think that's the mode you've got it on, Matt. So it might be worth like because when I when I was doing that early section, I was like, "Oh, thank fuck, it's not grading me anymore." Like that's <laughs> because that you know that is a, a typical um, you know platinum thing. Yeah. And like, as someone who really enjoys these games and has played a lot of them, I still like you know when I'm play like my first run through like Bayonetta or Bayonetta two, 
I'm just getting shit ratings constantly. And you're just like, look, I don't need to see this. Just let me play the game once through and then I'll worry about how well I'm doing. Um, so yeah, so when I thought it just actually wasn't grading me at all, I was like, oh, thank fuck. I'm not going to be told how shit I am every five minutes. Um, but so I, I mean, I've put it up to platinum standard and I'll see how I go. Um, I imagine so is I'll, that the like, top difficulty? That's the, well, yeah, it's the top one that it offers you to begin with. I, I assume there are higher ones. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. Um so uh, yeah, I I I'd see how you go. Yeah, um, cuz like, you can uh, shift it around anyway. Like yeah, yeah just... I, I mean I'm going to I mean I know those first like a few levels are just to get you understanding, but like when you first get your legion and there's like you have those first two battles and and yeah, with, with all the cutscenes towards the beginning, I was like, this is awesome, but I'm just... And yes, I'm, I'm like making sure I'm not just running in and hitting it. I'm like stepping back when I need to and going back in, but I was just literally just hammering a button. So I was like, this isn't very satisfying. And as a newcomer to this sort of game, I'm like, what mm-hmm. is this even about? So yeah, I'll, I'll keep going. And then I, but I feel like I need to move up to at least a level where you get the grades because... Yeah, because is it all about chaining different moves? So, so is this much more like a beat 'em up than I anticipated? That actually, you remember and know certain move sets, or is it oh not yeah, like there's that the, at all? yeah, there's like set combos and stuff. I believe, yeah. Okay, so you guys are literally um, playing like certain combination of buttons in order to do certain moves and chain them in a way that you know would work in battle scenarios. Is that what you're doing? Well, you will be, yeah. Once you once you start to, because the thing is, you need to. It's all about the legion that you work with and the mm. like and how you work with that and. Until you've done like the event, which you probably haven't done yet, that won't be fully apparent. But then it becomes okay. So. Okay, you'll see. Okay, cool. Because I think uh, like yeah, and because obviously like what you're bumping up against here, Matt, is that like because normally that legion isn't there. Like yeah, they normally like platinum games are really involved with the combos and stuff like right off the bat. Whereas this, yeah. I think, very intentionally like strips that stuff away um certainly to begin with just because it's like you are getting your head around controlling a second character as well so yeah mm. so it's it's an interesting one for you to, to be your first i think yeah um, but no i'm gonna keep going i mean i, I think i actually said on sunday night stream at the ask stream mm-hmm. with me and james i said oh gears five's out next or this friday i'm gonna have to mm-hmm. get it hammered before then thinking mm-hmm. this game is a short game but actually <laughs> the, a gears actually isn't actually out until a tenth so i've got Hey. Much longer to play this, and I'm, yeah, yeah, this is a game now I'm playing now until Gears is out on temp. So cool. I'm excited to get more, and I want to see what these games are about. And mm-hmm. um, so I'll keep trying, even though right now I'm like, what even is really happening? But yeah, it looks stunning. I love the style as well, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm up for whatever crazy story is about to happen. It seems like it's going to be pretty madcap. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm going to keep going. But yeah, but um, uh, are you are you both absolutely loving it? Then you think this is up there with so the best? So far, yeah, I'm I'm well excited about playing more of it. Yeah. Fantastic, and you, James. I presume you've also played all the others, a lot of other games like this as well. I yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, this this one is turning out to be very nice so far. Yeah, mm. cool. Yeah, well, cool. I'll, I'll hopefully have much more to say from a bit, a bit of a uh, more informed position next week. Hopefully, yeah. Um, right, the last one that I think all of us have played now, although this will be brief, um, is I think we've all now played Life is Strange two episode four. Is that right? Yes, correct. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously, yeah, so finished, we'll we will do a spoiler night. cast about this as, well, as soon as we can, um, which what like next week, <laughs> if that. Um, yeah, you're thinking next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, broadly speaking, I am so impressed with this. Like, I'm really excited about the final episode now. Um, That's interesting. Like, okay, are you, no, are you not? I didn't think much of this episode at all. Probably, Shit. okay, we should probably not talk about this because this is. Yeah, like, well, it's, yeah <laughs> all right, fine. I mean, no, I, I just thought this was going to be like everyone broadly recommends it and then we move on, but okay, okay, all right, fine. Yeah, I um, mean, this, uh, this point is probably the wrong word, but I, I played this episode very different to how I normally play. Normally, how I play these like, episodes, which are about between three and four hours long, mm-hmm. closer to three hours normally, I basically set an evening aside and I play the whole thing in one go. Yeah. Maybe. If it's dragging on, maybe I will finish off in a second play for a second sort of a session. But generally, yeah. one go, that's it. But this, I did like an hour here, half an hour there, half an hour there, and uh, okay. maybe that affected how I took to what happened in the episode. Yeah. Um. And, but yeah, I I, I finished the episode thinking, okay, it's just. I mean, obviously, I'm excited <laughs> for the next one because it's a great series. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I I really can't wait to see what happens next. But as mm. a, as an episode in itself, I wasn't wasn't blown away and i've heard mostly everyone saying it's fucking it's really excellent so um mm. i'm clearly in clearly in the minority there but it didn't do much for me but you two yeah. both loved it do you 
I did. I think, I really liked it with a couple of small reservations. But yeah, yeah no, that's that's fair. I can yeah okay. But yeah, that's a right, well, we'll yeah. fight about that yeah. next week then. I mean, I can't wait to do a spoiler spoiler <laughs> cast because I have um, I have questions. Also, yeah. this is the first time I'd ever played this uh, episode or an episode of this where I was the last one out of our four to play it. Oh, that's true. It's usually so me. Normally, I'm first, or I get it done like the first day or two. Yeah. But I, I was delayed because I was playing Control and, and other games. So, but this time, for the first time ever, I actually got to see all of your results, <laughs> and and ra- rather than me being the first, and it's just like my friends is like zero percent because no one else has mm. played it. Mm. I actually got to see what you guys did. So I thought that was interesting at the end. Yeah, uh, yeah and I cannot wait for the spoiler cast because yeah, I, I've it's got a lot good. of opinions on this episode. Be but you know, it, it's still Life is Strange too. Still an absolutely brilliant game, um, yeah. but yeah, I just I hope it gets a, a bit more traction when because I know the you know there hasn't been much marketing around it. I'm assuming when the final episode comes out and like you know you can just buy the whole season just before Christmas. I'm hoping there's going to be like a real you know a bit of, bit of support around it because it's it's been great and I can't believe there hasn't been as much noise around it as there was yeah, around the first it, series. It's, it feels really quiet, which is yeah. sad, but. Like yeah, I said, yeah. maybe they've looked at the numbers. Actually, a lot of people just like to buy the game as one and yeah. hammer it through. Yeah, yeah. Because um, because anyway, like we've that. said before, the gaps between the episodes have been a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. Out, what, year. November, December. I think it's early December. Yeah. Yeah, mad. Yeah. Um, I've just got a couple more, which should only be brief. Um, so last week uh, I talked about Rad. Uh, the Double Fine game, um, playing yeah. that on the Switch, and I was saying how it is really hard, and I was not getting on with it as a result. Uh, Chris Johnston of uh, Player One Podcast got in touch, and he was like, yeah, you know, there's 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 options, there's difficulty options. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, yeah, in the options screen, there's like a, there's various assists you can use, and um, uh, to be honest, I've forgotten what half of them were. They were all, like, some of them were like really quite massive, like fundamental changes, and some were just quite uh, quite slight all i did was i enabled the one that makes you do a bit more damage and fucking hell it's a different game uh, um, how would you not go into those menus to look at the options available i, I didn't i don't know it just didn't even occur to me you know well, most but, games well, when you go start games yeah. when i start a game i literally the first thing i do is i go in settings i don't know oh, no, if, if that's no, maybe from that. like my no, own like I'm pc that. gamer days i always do that it's the first really? thing I do is go in options. Yeah, tell yeah, me. Like, right. so the game loads up. Like obviously, there's that like, start game or whatever, or whatever like, that the option is. But I'm like, I go to like every other option on the main menu, check everything possibly. And I think that may be like a PC gamer mentality from when I was like yeah. 15, 16. Like checking out know, yeah. what was the resolution and the various yeah. settings. But no, I always check every single setting just because okay. that's just. I don't know. What, I don't know what I expect to see. That I even like you know, <laughs> anything on that, that main menu. I check just in case <laughs> there's something on there I may need to see. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. So literally, just like right, bit more damage, thank you. And then, so you know, I was saying last week that I couldn't even really get past like the first world. Um, mm. Got to world three, um, and it was great. I had loads more fun with it, and got to see loads more of the mutations, and um, sort of have a bit a better a better idea of how the, the overall structure works. Like you, you're supposed to like every time you finish a world, like the money that you're carrying, you can like cash it in. And like store it, and then that I think that gives you like other benefits later on, um, and yeah, uh, just, yeah, loads better. So I'm, I'm, it's not like I'm not obsessed with it. Certainly not in the face of like having like Astral Chain and Control and, and stuff to play, um, but it's been like a, a really nice game to just sort of dip in, like dip in and out of, um, in between everything else. So yeah, I basically ignore everything I said last week about the the difficulty. Oh yeah, and I think you know I was saying like how it's like. Double fine games tend to be really funny, and this one just hadn't made me laugh at all. Um, <laughs> so between each world, you like so you can visit like the hometown again, and everyone comments on like the mutations that you've picked up. So like, <laughs> that's not, uh, that's a nice touch, isn't it? Yeah. So like you know, I had like this one ability that allowed me to slow down time, which manifested as like this like brain like grew out of the the back of my like the base of my my back. And like, and you just go up to people in town. They're like, "Oh, hey, you've got a back brain now," <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's just genuinely quite funny. Um, so yeah, I thought that was really smart. That made me laugh a lot. Um, yeah, so uh, rad. It's good. Quite like it. So, have, um, are you close to finishing? Is it a big old game or? 
It's well, it's a roguelike, so it's sort of yeah. So like I said, you know, I made loads of progress, got to world three, and then died. So then that um, puts me back at oh, the right. start. So, but yeah, quite quite happy to keep um, keep having, having a go at it. Um, I'm not expecting is, to is finish that a game it any pass game or what, how are you playing that again? Uh, I'm playing it on the Switch. Oh, all right, um, okay. which it's sort of perfect for because, like I say, it's not hugely deep or anything. Um, and because it's a roguelike, obviously it's sort of designed for sort of shorter play sessions. It's designed to be like a little bit you know, disposable, I guess. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, visually, it's a bit gnarly on the Switch. It does this weird. It's like certain effects like render at different resolutions and stuff to try and keep the frame rate going along. It's, it looks kind of weird, but um, it's fine. Um, the nice. other thing I played, because uh, obviously last week Matt talked about telling lies. Um, I sat down with my wife and played through her story. Nice. Um, That's cool. Talking about all the new games on the computer game show. What did you play um, it on? Sorry? What did you play it on? Uh, PC. Okay. Because uh, I've had it for years. It was like, you know, obviously it's been out since 2015. And then obviously at some point it was in a sale and I grabbed it knowing that it was supposed to be very good. Um, yeah, surprise bulletin from four years ago. It's fucking great, and I'm so excited about playing Telling Lies now. It really is. Um, yeah, oh, it's just absolutely wonderful. I mean, I don't know if I need to worry about spoiling it. I mean, probably not, given that it's four years old, but then if someone had spoiled it for me, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have played it this week and, and really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, and just what a great experience. Like, I was so glad that I, you know, managed to sit down with my wife and play it. Like, we had such a good time. Like, she was, like, taking all the notes, Um and like when we were just like you know talking through everything together and like yeah it was a proper yeah good I mean, fun. after playing um uh, telling lies I, I said like this would be great we we you know for you to play it with a partner yeah. yeah it's just like it's a great really engaging story two of you can discuss and mm-hmm. think okay let's search for this let's look at that what does that mean yeah and uh yeah her story a bit or her story and telling lies a bit are both perfect for that so so, yeah. so so she really enjoyed it did she yeah she did yeah she loved it and then like immediately like played with the trailer for telling lies and she's like properly excited about going into that as well now so yeah yeah just a shout out in case you haven't already heard her story is fucking brilliant fantastic <laughs> but yeah uh matt do you want to have you got any more uh, I, pl- I played Alex Kid in Miracle World again on Sunday, me and James. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. How's it going? It's going well, actually. Um, yeah. I mean, I haven't finished the game yet, so... <laughs> he made progress, though. That. I mean, not, okay. not yeah. quantum leaps that he made the work first week, but he is making progress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but th- this week I was... I mean, the first... My first... Well, actually, second one, because the first one I died really quickly, but second one, I was all business, not a lot mm. of chatter. I was just, like, playing a game, and I got to the castle straight away really quickly. But after that, we got bogged down in the conversations about you know phone contracts and um <laughs> and like how you sit when you play games and god knows what else and then that wasn't really concentrating to watch, on, to but watch no, this on i YouTube, got further right? to, i got further than ever before um mm-hmm. and i got through to what felt like a really fast stage and uh, i'm absolutely loving playing the game it's just it's great playing it it's um it gets quite tense and i've got like a few lives left and i've got to a, a boss where i know is probably going to kill me or I haven't written down if he's going to do stone or paper <laughs> or, or or scissors um but uh yeah i'm 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 loving streaming james it's it's always good and uh and i think the chat are enjoying it too so you know i'm i was really hoping to get it done actually on sunday but <laughs> it wasn't to be so hopefully next Sunday or this coming Sunday, sorry, but we will yes. we'll see. I mean, I, I I can go up to where I got to this time relatively easy if I concentrate. It's now just the last bit after this. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think it's going, James? As I said, I think you're doing well. I think, but I think we've started to hit a bit of a brick wall last night with it because yeah. it. I mean, the thing is, is like it does start to get a bit trickier, and we haven't even hit the really difficult bit yet, and that's what I'm a bit worried about. <laughs> So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I, I got still... to now. I'm like, as if I use save states, like, I I can do this. It's just there's a lot of it. But now I'm thinking, oh hang on, what if this game does suddenly flip and it is suddenly ridiculous? <laughs> uh, but I'm not using save states. People keep coming and chat like, hey, so is Matt not finished yet? Is he using save states yet? I'm like, no, we're not using save states. I mean, <laughs> I know that's giving massive regret, aka Ornstein and Smo levels of regret. I don't want to do that again. So I will. I'm going to keep bloody going, and I'm not using save states. I'm going to get this game done without save states. That's a promise, all right? All right, all right fine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, I think you will I do it, it, but I still think it's going to take a couple more weeks, to be honest. I, I don't think That's you're going fine. to... That's fine, that's fine. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't care how long it takes. It's yeah. going to get done. Um, and But I, I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, getting to each new level, I'm like, did I do this when I was a kid? Oh, yes, I do remember this. And uh, yeah, I, I'm actually loving it. This is uh, it's a great game. 
it's, <laughs> it's gone off my estimation when i was a kid it was just like some really hard platform game and now i'm just loving it a bit more but yeah um that, that's all we've been playing really but it's astral chain now for me until i think gears yeah, five's out on the 10th i think that's i think there's nothing else that i can remember that's out between now and gears five but uh no doubt 20 games quite next week that i haven't heard of and uh, yeah. it'll be a busy one probably james you got any more uh, only one, which I won't talk yeah. about excessively, but I mean, I played yeah. Little Nightmares. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And you see, this is weird because I'm not sure what I was expecting with this because I saw all the promo videos because this came out on PC ages ago, presumably, yeah? Is... Uh, and the, the the big consoles, I think, yeah. Okay. So I only just got it on Switch recently because it was cheap. Like, they did, like, mm-hmm. it was like 11 quid, I think, for like the whole definitive collection or whatever. Okay. So I thought I'd give it a go. But then I've not really heard anyone ever talk about it. Like I've I've just heard people say yeah it looks nice or whatever but not really anyone saying anything. I mean mm-hmm. a shorthand explanation is that it, it's it's kind of like limbo or inside or whatever you know it's like kind yeah. of like you're trying to escape. Oh is it? Yeah yeah it's it's. Oh always... okay I I don't know anything about this game. I, I obviously you mention it but oh okay so it's one of those sorts of games is yeah. it? Yeah it's you're basically just trying to escape and you each room each area that you go into has like some puzzles or whatever you yeah that are environmental puzzles that you've got to try and figure out you know to sort of progress and in, in a like sort of a really very well designed, horribly dingy sort of ship that you're trying to escape from is kind of what's going on. And there's also like a whole backstory there with all the characters that are around you that is sort of told to you through the environment as well. And it's it's very well done and very well, uh, sort of very interesting. I mean, I, I played through the first, um, the main game, which is where you play uh, with like with just with one of the characters and it it was fantastic. Like it's, it's really. I found it very well judged in terms of like the difficulty curve, in terms of like the, uh, the puzzles. Were, you know, were just about right for each sort of area that I went into. But then I got to play this the DLC, and it's really difficult. <laughs> like by comparison, it's like it's it like with the other one, it feels like they nice they sort of nicely sort of urge you into like into like sort of the, the sort of the thought patterns but with this one it took me quite a long time to get through because there was a lot of stuff where I was like I a couple of things I looked up because I was like I have no idea how I would have figured that out there's no way I would have done that on my own um but the main game I never felt the need to do that because it all felt completely natural there was a couple of times where I was stuck but you just sort of look around and eventually you figure it out but yeah the this this the other story was much more difficult but What's really nice is that the the DLC tells the same kind of story but from a different perspective, and then they kind of meet up a bit like towards the end, and it's it's really yeah it's really great. But mm-hmm. yeah, atmospherically fantastic. I'm surprised no one seems to bother playing this because I think it's very good. It's um yeah cool. it's also it's not very long either. I mean you can do the whole thing probably in under I don't know probably five six hours. You can do like the whole thing, and right. I I was re- I was quite gripped by it. I mean I was just uh, yeah I. I kept on sort of coming back to it. Even when I got stuck, I had that thing where you play and then you stop because you feel, oh, I've had enough of this now. And then about five minutes later, I was like, oh, I think I'll go back and play some more because I think I can figure that out. And uh, yeah, it's it's very good. I would heartily recommend it because I think it's it's great. I also so- need to watch a load of the YouTube videos because there's tons and tons of backstory stuff as well that I've, I'd like to explore. Um, cool. Yeah, because I think it's interesting. Um, so, so how scary is this? Would you say? Is it? Not- it's not scary. It's it's okay, not scary. Cool. It's I mean, it's not called big nightmares, is it? No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it sounds easy. I mean, there's yeah. bits in it. I mean, there's no, there's no like, there's no jump scares or anything like that. It's not that kind of game, okay. really. It's just it and the. I mean, the monster design that they have is very interesting. I think it looks incredible and like on mm-hmm. Switch in particular, again, it looks great. Although it did make my Switch like sound like a like my PS4. Like it was, it was, it was really going crazy. But um, yeah, it's still absolutely excellent. Yeah, I mean, I love games like Inside Limbo and that sort of stuff. So I think you'd like it. Up. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize it was a game like that. I haven't really looked into it, but uh, yeah, I guess you're psyched for the sequel. What, is that out this year or next year? Uh, it's next year, I think. But yeah, I'm okay, cool. Definitely now, yeah, because it's um, yeah, it was again. As I said, it was something I had no idea really about, apart from seeing a trailer and thinking that looked interesting. But yeah, I really think it's very good. It's uh, yeah, nice. Speaking of jump scares, you finished Until Dawn, didn't you, this week? I did, yeah. I, I, I mean, that, <laughs> well, last that's, week, sorry. that's a very good game, um, Until Dawn. Yeah. I mean, it tails off a bit, I think, towards the end. I think the first, maybe two-thirds of the game are, are better than the ending like sort of section where things kind of get revealed and it's maybe not quite as interesting as I was hoping it was going to be. But um, it still has brilliant characters and funny writing like throughout. It really clearly knows what it is 
and uh, mm. yeah, it really plays up to it. And I was devastated because I lost one of my characters that I was trying to keep alive. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he uh, he died because I made a mistake in the end. But I still managed to save <laughs> Emily, so it's fine. It's <laughs> it was all okay, but uh, yeah, it was a very very fun game to stream, and uh, yeah, it, it definitely. I mean, out of all the stuff that I've streamed, it's probably the one I've had the most fun with because I just genuinely enjoy playing it rather than gritting my teeth and playing it. It was yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was nice to see you actually enjoy a game. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I did rare, jump. Be- I, beautiful and rare thing. There weren't so many jump scares, I don't think, in the last episode, but there was still just a lot of mm-hmm. funny moments. I think it was it was good. Yeah, cool. We'll have to look at um, like if wherever we are for EGX or whatever, like if we're all in the same building, we'll have to try and stream a bit of Hidden Agenda as well and see it, see how that yeah. works. So that'd be really interesting. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine yeah. us not being in the same building. Do you know what I mean? I mean, if we're in the same building with a good internet connection and a console yeah, yeah, to stream yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it's a whole whole faff in it. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, right, is it emails time? It is emails time. Um, cool. If you want to email us, it's podcast at thecomputergameshow.com. Uh, Stuart Baker's written in. He said, uh, recently my laptop, laptop died and having not had a gaming machine other than consoles for about 15 years, I took this opportunity to finally get myself one and get back into PC gaming. I immediately jumped on PC Game Pass offer and gave uh, Gears of War 4 a whirl. Not having an Xbox this gen uh, meant I never got a chance to play it. However, I wasn't too bothered as I was pretty much geared out after the third, or so I thought. Last night I completed it after smashing through it all week. I've spent all my spare time the last few days playing through the game, rediscovering why I love the Gears franchise to begin with, and how much I love uh, the guns and gunplay. I'm now ridiculously pumped for Gears 5, and love the fact that I only have two weeks to wait. I have two questions off the back of my time with Gears 4, if that's okay. Is there a gaming franchise... That's your first question. Okay. Yeah, is... that's that done. <laughs> no. Is there a gaming franchise you thought you were done with, but eventually pulled you back in with newer additions to the franchise? And what's your favourite gaming weapon? Playing this game just reconfirmed that the Lancer is up there as one of the best of all time. It's meaty as hell, shoots and handles so well, and has a chainsaw attached to boot. What more could you ask for? And that's it. Uh, a gaming franchise you thought you were done with eventually pulled you back in with newer additions. I mean, I thought I hated Assassin's Creed and then Black Flag happened. Um, and then it turns out after that, I still hated Assassin's Creed, but Black Flag was like this <laughs> wonderful... So it did nothing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it sort of... It was interesting in that, like, you know, uh, the character you play as wants to be a pirate and feels sort of a little bit bogged down by all the assassin shit that's going on. And I'm like, mate, same. It's <laughs> so um yeah so that was interesting um other than that I, I don't know i'm I'm struggling to think of anything have you guys got any i flip flop on stuff all the time with this sort of thing, <laughs> so i'm sure it's gonna be i mean i'm sure at some point i will go back to xenoblade chronicles again even though i've like will you tried that something i'm probably not no you won't no, there's been won't. like two occasions that you've like done that and i've tried stopped. it twice yeah and it's it's not really worked out i don't know what about you matt have you got anything I mean, um, I love Shining Force Three without playing the first two, um, but I don't mean like so. So many like franchises, you like you have like an idea about what that is about, and you don't bother at all. And it's yeah. rare for a game to come out and you think, "Hang on, maybe I will try this." I mean, um, it's not only really franchise, but even just like playing Astral Chain, I'm like, I just saw mm. those sorts of games before and just thought, "Now, nah, just you know, I didn't see them and get pumped." I yeah. can think of one. Uh, I know they're not all franchise, but um, so was that James? I can think of one: Resident Evil Seven coming back to that because I yep. felt done with that after Resident Evil 5 because yeah mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's, that's a great example I, I did mean, not 7 is way too scary for me but I definitely see what you mean because I, I really didn't enjoy I like see, I didn't enjoy the direction that it took with 4 I know 4 is a very good game what but no no no, no 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 understand what I'm saying here right this is otherwise <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to go wildly out of control yeah 4 is a very listeners very good are writing game. emails as we speak yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, so am I. Four is a very good game, and I enjoyed it very much. But it's an action yeah. game; it's not a horror game, and yeah, that is that is why I enjoyed Resident Evil Seven because it felt like it went back to like the horror kind of roots more than the the than uh, Four did. But I still yeah. enjoyed Four. Four was very good, but Five was not a good game, and neither was Six. You see, Four is the only one that I like. So, <laughs> yeah. But, oh, uh, really? yeah. But that that's me not being a horror fan. So yeah. But so, did you play Five and Six? Uh, I played five, and you know what? I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, but I understand people who, who were fully like, "I want a repeat of Resident Evil Four, the best game ever made," uh, would have been massively disappointed by it. And then, like the co-op stuff, like they probably just shouldn't have bothered. To be honest, it was like, 
uh, like playing it with a mate was fine, but if you didn't have a friend, like just relying on the AI was just a fucking nightmare. So yeah, yeah I bet. It also made yeah, hate QTEs more than I already did. Yes, because it's the worst. Even the even the boulder punch. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about this before, but Prince of Persia, when that one came back, that, that, that first 3D one, I was like, oh, wow, Prince mm, of Persia is amazing. Like, yeah, Sound of, of Time. I think I might have played... Was that, was that Sound of Time? Yeah, Sound of Time. Time. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. all that came out on it's like PS2, Xbox, GameCube. You know, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I suppose, I think arguably, I'd... that had very little in common with the older ones. Yeah, the original ones yeah. on Mega Drive and stuff, yeah, yeah. Well, which I enjoyed, but then it's like, oh, wow, Prince... And like the fact it sort of redefined itself in the 3D space... Uh, yeah. I thought uh, yeah, that was great. And basically set a lot of the rules for like 3D platformers that, like, yeah. <laughs> in yeah. a lot of ways. Surely um, that has to be a franchise that's going to come back. Or well, maybe it's just people of our age group that remember it. Like no one else obviously. But then know, they found it up, okay. didn't they, by making everything grimdark like the whole yeah, time. Yeah, they made it, it all was... moody and then there was the film yeah. Um, yeah, with yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal in it. And then there's the Prince of Persia 2008, which was a, a bold reinvention. Um, how successful it was depends as you talk to <laughs> Um, but certainly that yeah they they tried to make like a, a proper go of of like redoing it and then I don't know yeah they, I think I think that was the last one Jesus Christ has it seriously been eleven yeah because that was in two thousand eight has that been eleven years since we had a Prince of Persia game surely not bring it back put PS five launch title come on yeah mate man. just think of all the sand they could all the you know the uh, ray tracing sand they could do. <laughs> oh well, my god that. sorry I've just googled Prince of Persia and. <laughs> you know, have, have, you, have you got safe mode on or off? Like, uh, it, it... Uh, off. Uh, but so you know, obviously, it could be uh, Google's like, here's what people have asked about this thing. Oh, no. People also ask, is Prince of Persia a real story? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> oh my god! Answer in that there was a place called Persia. We now refer to it as Iran, and it did have at least one prince. That's about it. There's no such thing as a magical dagger that can reverse time if you let the sand out of the impractical glass handle. The movie is based on a video game. Don't spoil it, Sean. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Um, I mean, unfortunately, Google's already tracked that I clicked on that question now and thinks I'm an idiot. Yeah, Yeah, it thinks you don't have any understanding of that. Uh, Uh, What about favourite weapons? weapons? Uh, I mean, Cerebral Ball is always the answer for me. But um, The what? Yeah. So what's that? What did you say, Matt? I didn't hear. Cerebral bore, obviously from Turok. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not actually useful, though, is it? It's just absurd. Yeah, but it's just cool as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, grenade launcher from Quake Two. The noise it makes is is brilliant. Um, I go for super shotgun from Doom Two because uh, I was the noise say, that yeah, makes that's... is amazing. It's uh, yep. and the, the the heft of it. It's very good. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, also next, like next, uh, Qua- Quailag's yeah. Fury Sword in Dark Souls was a, oh, yeah, was a yeah. special weapon. Yeah, definitely. The best one in the game, mate. Um, right, what's next, James? James. Okay, uh, Rafi says, after listening to Sean talk enthusiastically about Gears of War pop, but not feeling like they wanted to spend money, I wanted to ask, is there a free-to-play model that you are comfortable with? And if not, do you have any ideas on how to make free-to-play games better for gamers, whilst also ensuring stable revenue for development teams? I've no idea to think. how to do I mean, that. James, I know the... you say, James, as soon as you open an app and you see like you can buy gems or whatever, that you're instantly angry. Well, I'm um, instantly not interested in playing that game, is, is what happens. But I find that really strange. Like that, that Just, well, play the game. Like it, it, Just because they say you want to buy something, they're obviously going to do that because they need to make money to sustain game development. No, but then I also know it's been... I know that the game has been designed to try and part money from me. And I just that means it's been designed around that game mechanic in the same way that arcade games always were. And it's yeah. just and I never really liked arcade games that much for the same reason. It's just I want to be able to pay some money and play a game. I don't want to feel like I'm I'm being manipulated into spending more money while I'm playing it. Yeah. No, I I, I, I can uh, get behind that, yeah. Um I mean yeah, like, yeah, like a free to play models that I can't, I'm comfortable with. I mean, yeah, the ones where I don't feel like I need to spend any money, but obviously that's the death of the the devs so mm. i don't i don't know what the middle ground is as you say I mean, James, for me I, if i nothing. play a game what well, if it doesn't have all the gem stuff i mean i that i see that and that, that doesn't bother me because i want to mm. actually touch the game on what the game's like regardless of if you can buy gems or not because like I, I played games where they might have that, that gem stuff in it and i don't like the game but if i 
play a game like that and actually the game is brilliant or I'm really addicted to it or I've had loads of fun I don't mind buying some of the currency to sort of reward the developers if the game is great yeah. regardless of whether that mechanic is in or out I, I think it's unfair to say oh you can buy stuff in a game it's been designed around that uh, obviously these these companies are businesses and ultimately they're there to make money ultimately they're money from people buying the game and or buying things within the game but I think it's really unfair to say oh you can buy something in a game it's been designed around that some people might just be making a game and thinking oh well we need to obviously get some monetization into this how can we do that we'll use what everyone else is doing in modern gaming you can buy a currency and maybe that could help you through the game or help support the game or you can get things faster i don't know um but i say most games are going to use this sort of mechanic because this is just what modern gaming is about you buy a currency with your real currency and that helps you in the game yeah but um, as i said i know what you're saying fine, but like but, but once you see something to do that <laughs> I don't, I don't, if I want to, I don't have to do that. If I don't want to, and I don't want to, because it doesn't make me feel comfortable. I mean, it's oh, of course. Like, yeah. I, it's, one question to me: it's the fact that, like, if something has free-to-play elements, it plants that that seed of doubt. That, like, if you get to a difficult bit in the game, you're just like, well, is this is this supposed to be difficult, or am I now supposed to pay money? It is and, it's exactly. It's like, is this yeah. rigged? It's like any gacha yeah. machine. It's like you yeah. know that this has been designed in this way to extract as much money as possible. That's the whole purpose. But, but, of it. but like, even if it hasn't. Like mm. for argument's sake, like say, like like Matt's suggesting, yeah, there, there, of course there will be games that you know have a free to play model but aren't designed cynically. Yeah, but there's still that the question lingers for me, um, regardless. Also, so, my question here is: it says here, is there a free to play model that you are comfortable with? And it says if if not, do you have any ideas on how to make free to play games better for gamers whilst also ensure stable revenue? In mm. terms of stable revenue, before um, like free to play happened on mobile. Did developers make money on iOS and on Android from selling games? Gotcha. Yeah. So then what's the problem here? Well, they... no, because they did, because the market is different back then. They just back didn't then, make all the money. Oh, hang on, yeah. I can play a game on my mobile telephone. I will pay the <laughs> four, five, eight pound, whatever it is. But now people are like, there's loads of free games. I'm not going to bother. Like, So it was a different It's a different time back then. People, yeah. I myself, were was spending money on apps, on games, because it's like, wow, I bought a game digitally on my, on my telephone. And now, with free to play happen, the bottom fell out of the market, and it's like race to the bottom, or whatever it is. And then mm-hmm. people are having to find other ways to make money. So people yeah. were making money, but people were. It was a novelty. It was like, wow, I can. Buy it wasn't a game. just a novelty though. There was really good games as well that were worth but paying no, but, money but, but, for. Yeah, and that's right, the but whole but point. It I feel that free to play devalues games. It it devalues oh, what yeah. games are worth, and it's. It's it's basically trying to figure out this sort of thing of like how much will people pay to like play games. I'd rather I'd rather play the money up front and just that's the value of what the game is. I mean, this is one of the things I mean Nintendo have always been on about is this idea of like games getting I mean it's it's the problem with like with PS4 and Xbox One, isn't it? It's like you buy a game, then after a couple of days or whatever, it's suddenly worth nothing, like at all. You know, like well, okay. After a couple of weeks it's worth like, you know, ten pounds when you've paid like forty for it. Whereas you don't get that with like Xbox with um like with Nintendo games because there is generally that idea that they hold their value. And I, I just don't like this concept of like of giving away stuff for free when actually this people's labour and people's work has gone into this, and they deserve to be paid for it. But I still feel it would be better for them to be paid up front rather than trying to sort of figure out some way to sort of kind of get money out of people, you know, using the free to play model. Hmm. That was a rant, yeah. and I, it didn't. I didn't know where I was going with it, but um, no, that's fine. Um, um, <laughs> I mean, I've got an answer, but you, you go, Sean. Uh, no, I, I was just going to say, for me, the the ideal is basically the situation Matt was describing, where I'm like, I've played a game for like a free to play game for like ten hours, and I'm like, yeah, do you know what? Add a fiver for some currency, currency or some cosmetic shit, whatever, because I feel like I'm just paying what I would have paid for the game anyway if I had to pay up front. Um, so that to me, that you know, I don't feel like I've been manipulated into doing that. It just feels like me basically saying thanks <laughs> for the game. Um, so to me, that's that's like the ideal. But yeah, yeah. I mean, Fire Emblem Heroes. I had loads of fun with that, and it was well worth the the twenty or thirty quid <laughs> I put into it. But also, that was way less egregious than Gears of War Pop, whereby you play that, and the first after the first game, the first like few minutes, minute or two, suddenly you go away four hours for a chest to open. I was like, fuck, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. but my my answer for this is if I play. I mean, it's not a model these days, so it's not really a thing. But I used to like it. If I played a free-to-play game, but I had ads in, I would easily pay the one, two, 
three, five pound, whatever it is, to remove ads. Yeah, I'm and, up with um, that. That's fine. Yeah. Because obviously, like, famously Flappy Bird was making absolutely fuckloads of money just because <laughs> I had ads in the app, you know. Yeah, yeah, And then I can't remember if you could play, a, I, if you could play premium to remove them. But, you know, those are games I've played. If it's got ads uh, and I'm enjoying it and I play like an hour or even less than that, but I'm enjoying it, I will happily pay the money to get rid of the ads. So hopefully that goes to the developer mm. and then I can just play the game indefinitely with no ads. But, mm. I mean, totally today's you. model is, today's model, it clearly is to do the, the gem route and that's, just the way it is. I mean, See, I, I'm sure that will change with all these things. They change. There are trends, and um, and that model will change over time. See, I I completely agree with you because I did that on numerous occasions when I played mobile games. I used to always, you know, just think, okay, I'll just pay out the cash so I don't have to see adverts. I'm I've, definitely yeah. That was absolutely fine. As I've said repeatedly, I just don't like the idea that this system then creates games that are being designed around these mechanics because. I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't have, a, I don't have a, a good enough reason apart from that. I he just, doesn't like it. I just don't right, like, it. like it. And it's already nearly 11 o'clock. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I it's noticed twi- you... Yeah, there's, 20 there's to few, 11, A few emails already missing from the doc, I've Rubbish. noticed. But yeah, I've right. not deleted anything. Nothing's been deleted this time. It's, um, yeah. Anyway... Capone has said, really enjoyed the FIFA stream. I love the idea that someone somewhere was browsing Twitch wondering why some guy, some guy is streaming FIFA 17. Not only that, Sean at one point was the biggest FIFA 7, 2017 stream on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Which was amazing. Just put behind him with like 50, 60 viewers. No, no. But what, Sean was at a top of 100. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. That's incredible. But anyway, um, then I started thinking about this more. I mean, streaming older games in a series is pretty standard, isn't it? But for some reason, playing older versions of football games seems weird, as updates generally improve and reflect the latest real-world teams. I say this as someone who doesn't follow the series closely, so perhaps I'm missing something. Have you ever, have any of you ever not enjoyed a FIFA update and gone back to the older one? People do do that. That does that do does they? happen sometimes, yeah. Well, this it, is why they just start shutting the servers off for the older ones, isn't it? Because there must that, still be people playing them. Yeah. And they're just I mean, trying to hurry everyone onto the newer ones. Also, people still playing like Pez and stuff like that because they don't want to play FIFA or whatever, or they, you know, yeah. they, or they don't like the new versions of Pez, or whatever. That does yeah. happen, like, yeah, quite frequently. I mean, with FIFA, it happened like it started in '94, but FIFA '95 was brilliant. FIFA '96 was when they moved to 3D, and it was dreadful. It and was, I still yeah. remember playing FIFA '95 when FIFA '96 was out on Saturn because it was just the the a free. It's the first 3D one. It was just bad. And then FIFA 97 wasn't great. FIFA Road to the World Cup 98 was a bit more of a return to form. And then they sort of, it was very much in like a FIFA model from there on in, there on out, I guess. But uh, yeah, I definitely remember loving FIFA 95 and FIFA 96 being bad, bad, mm-hmm. bad, bad. Yeah, yeah, that's my answer probably. They do, yeah. I mean, they do sometimes. I mean, they I, a, few, a couple of generations ago, Sean, they really changed the defending mechanism and how that worked. And right. people were initially not happy, but then now it's fine. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's that. Uh, no, it's it's an interesting point though that yeah, you sort of with my, like it says like with a lot of series, you wouldn't it wouldn't seem strange to go back to a previous iteration, but like with sports games or shooters, I guess to an extent, it's it's often the case of like, well, why would you play the old one? The new one's out. Like it's <laughs> but also yeah, it's, it's a shame because when when like Pez was doing much better than it is now. There yeah. really was like a rivalry between the two, and FIFA was yeah, really yeah. far behind for like a long time as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they did a lot to catch up and to become mm-hmm. like actually good, like and like games worth playing. But the thing is now is now it really is FIFA is mostly the only game in town. Like I mean, Pez yeah. gets released, but it's not to the fanfare it used to be, and it's a shame because then it does feel like EA just do the bare minimum now, really. You know, to yeah, because there's no real competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's which is a shame. It's like guess what, yeah, our I game mean, works online. <laughs> which one are you yeah. going to play? <laughs> yeah, which is a yeah massive yeah. advantage. Because <laughs> yeah. if people if you ask me what my favourite football game is, my first the first thing that comes into my brain is ISS Pro ninety eight on the PlayStation. I think mm-hmm. ISS sixty four. That was an amazing game. But yeah, I I, I, li- I did like it. But yeah, Pro ninety eight was like the one that 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 sticks in my mind. I've had so many games played of that, and I remember that you know the reviews and like CVG or whatever it was at the time saying you know this is just a stunning representation of football and. You know, like FIFA, that, that was like Road to the World Cup time, but it wasn't mm-hmm. wasn't great. And right, Pro, ISIS Pro was like that was like the the football fans' choice of football game. Yeah, and yeah, you're right. It's sad that we don't have that anymore, and FIFA's just doing what it's doing. Um, I mean, are we ever going to get someone coming into the, the scene now? Like no. FIFA's got the licenses, so I'd say it's highly um, unlikely because mm-hmm. I mean, like Pez, apart from the online aspect, Pez 
has always been a good game of football and I've always felt like it's a much more realistic game of football. FIFA might have the graphics, the licenses, the commentators, the teams, everything, the graphics. Uh, but Pez was just, as a pure like game of football, felt more realistic and I, I, I way, way preferred it. But like, So even if you have a better game, you still really can't compete on what people love, which is the graphics, the commentators, the licenses, the stadiums. It's, it's tough, really. I, I, mm. I don't really see I anyone mean, else coming in now. It's also because the last couple of versions of Pez, from what I've heard of, like, I mean, I think the most recent one is supposed to be very, very good, but for a couple of years it was really not great and mm. um, turned a lot of people off. Yeah. Well, no, I think actually they were good, but it was like so far behind in the online space. Then, mm-hmm. like, you know, obviously, so many people play this online. Um, that, yeah, I mean, there's no chance of me playing an offline game of Pez or FIFA, but it's all. So if that game has no, really no decent online mode, it's just dead and it's just dead in the water for most people. So mm. it's a shame. Yeah. Really. Well, shame. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's get on to tweets because uh, James is complaining about the time. Yes. Um, <sighs> we'll, it's at Computer Game Poll on Twitter. We'll answer this one. This is the last time we're going to answer this question <laughs> ever. <laughs> Curtis at Luke Cage H4H. Will one of you be playing Sekiro for the Game of the Year show? <laughs> now, a lot of people seem to think none of us have played it. Like, James played it for many, many hours, for like good two weeks, whatever, and then went away on holiday and then didn't want to go back to it. So there you go. I put That's five it. Or so played. Five, uh, yeah, he, he, he loved it, but stopped because he you know, came back and couldn't be out. He couldn't be out, so wasn't in the mood. I played for like mm, three or so hours, re enjoyed it, but other things happened and I just wasn't in the mood. Um, so, probably not at this rate. <laughs> It's looking you know, unlikely. You know, yeah. It's looking yeah. unlikely. You know, not every game is for everyone. We only have so much time. That that's where we are. Yeah. Also, Luke uh, says, seriously, where's my Overcooked Two Mega Stream? I mean, do, we, we do, do still need to do that, but it's uh, yeah. And how much closer is Farley to playing Zero Escape? <laughs> About as close as I was last time we asked. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen anytime soon, probably. Okay, uh, TCGS fans at TCGS fans on Twitter. Now that Sean has become a regular messy, is there a genre or type of game that the other team members totally hate that they would be made to play live on stream? Just thinking about sharing out the torture here, although James has already had to play beyond. I was going to say, this is this is like me playing FIFA that I didn't really want to do. It's very much me playing catch up because everyone else's stream shit they, they found horrifying or boring or just shite. So, I mean, really, you yeah. guys have already put the time in. I mean, I went through Resi 2. I mean, it was a great yeah. game, but also horrific. You know? Yes. Um, and James has played David Cage's back catalogue, so that's him done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a game I would hate to play on stream. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, obviously, no one likes being stuck on puzzles in front of an audience. <laughs> and I got stuck on an incredibly easy one in Resident Evil 2. So, Oh, do the witness. No, I actually loved yeah, the yeah. witness. I loved it. I oh, it was, did you? Okay, I sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah, I mean, um, I think Inside like, just beat that for game of the year for me that year. Was, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love the witness. But yeah, obviously incredibly difficult at points. But I, yeah. yeah, just uh, that's an amazing game. Mm. I can't think of like a game I'd hate, but I'm sure someone will let me know <laughs> what game. <laughs> I, I mean, any any horror game, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, then you've already successfully done that, and it was very entertaining. So. Yeah, I know there's a Blair Witch game out now, and oh, yeah. that's on Game Pass. And the Blair Witch project is still the scariest film I've ever seen. Yeah. Is it on and, Game Pass? Uh, really fucked me up. I think someone says on Game Pass. Yeah, maybe mm. I'm wrong. I'll be streaming I that in the future then. Like Twitter.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe another like really really bad horror game. Because mm. as much as I love Resident Evil 2, there were points on like this is horrendous and I want to be sick. Um, so is there anything else for you, Sean? That you, I mean, FIFA is, is happening now. I mean, FIFA's the the one really um i mean i don't know maybe if like the community pressured me into like getting good at fighting games or something that'd just be that'd be miserable not up yeah. for it if they Sorry. said okay you need to get on the capcom pro tour or whatever it is <laughs> we want to get egx on the stage doing that yeah no thanks not a fan no it's not happening sorry uh, well we'll cover, do this one as well because it's related uh, the Nick Parson at Argo underscore Bertha on Twitter if FPS games are shooty bang bang games to Sean what would football games be to him uh, kicky ball balls kicky ball balls yeah, of course obviously uh, I was going to say shooty shoot shoot but kicky <laughs> ball balls is, is way better <laughs> um, Thomas at Lamafluff 42 Hong Kong motherfuckers are any of you interested in the forthcoming Untitled Goose game 
I think I am, you know. I was a bit, like, when the first trailer came out, I was a bit like, yeah, but what is it? And is it just going to be one of those that everyone, you know, like, it's funny on paper and everyone talks about it and then it comes out and it's like, mm, it's not actually that great. But actually, there's, like, tons of, like, funny little objectives and stuff. It, it looks really cool. Yeah, so, it yeah. looked fantastic at Res when yeah. we saw it. And, yeah, um, yeah, 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 totally. Uh, yeah, and I, I was the same as you. I was like, oh, it's another kooky indie game. Like, <laughs> like you know, it, it looks great in GIFs and yeah, on exactly, Twitch, but yeah. like, what's actually like as a game? But no, it did look really entertaining uh, yeah. watching it being played at, at Res, so, yeah, so yeah, we'll yeah. see. That's like, yeah. what, September 20th, same day as... God, that's soon. The, same day as the Area 51 raid, um, <laughs> which is which is the only thing in the calendar on that day. Oh, yeah, also, yeah. there's that Zelda game. I mean, that's coming out, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That minor but it's mostly event. about the Air 51 yeah, raid. Yeah. I guess I'll be playing Zelda on the way to Nevada. Or in yeah, Nevada. why not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, uh, what's the, this is Thomas again. What's the best way of ridding yourself of the compulsion to unnecessarily buy games on day one? That's a question to Sean and James, not Matt, as he's worse than me. <laughs> um, I just... Haven't we all got that to some extent? Yeah, I'd, I'm pretty good, good these days. Like... I don't know. Unless it's something I'm really excited about. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Like... And I'm sure I've said this before, but I always just remind myself of Fallout 4. Like, when that came out, it was like the week before Payday it came out. And I was like, oh, man, I'm really excited about Fallout 4. Um, and oh, but I can't get it this week. I'll just have to wait one week. By the end of that week, no one was talking about it. <laughs> and I was just like, is Fallout 4 not great? And everyone was like, eh, it's fine. I was like, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to keep my £40. <laughs> and, and it was and just that like... one week cured you. Yeah, and it was like, and then once you've seen it once and become aware of it, you when you see how quickly the conversation moves on from certain games, you you just like, yeah, this probably isn't necessary, or certainly I don't need to buy it at full price. I mean, you know, if you're in the cycle of just like buying stuff new, caning it in a week, and then trading it in for the next thing, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm pre- I got pretty good impulse control these days. How about you, James? Yeah, I'm I'm terrible, James. Uh Kind of the same. It depends on what it is, though, because I, I often get hooked in these days with like Switch releases. Like Astral Train, yeah. I was interested in, but then I was like, oh, I can wait for this. But then I suddenly realised I couldn't, and I just really wanted to play it. And yeah, mm-hmm. which happens. But usually mostly with Switch games, though. I don't really get that with, with PS4 games that much these days. Yeah. Oh, really? So if everyone on Twitter is like, oh, two days to go, you're not like, oh, fuck, maybe I should order it now, <laughs> and it'll go on release date as well. Not really. Not so much. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Because so I traded in um, Fire Emblem for Astral Chain because uh, congratulations. I'm thank proud you. Of you. Um, well, yeah, because there was a there was a real risk that I would just not have played much else for the rest of the year. So, um, so yeah, do you know what? It's like it, I I was still enjoying it, but it wasn't showing me anything new. It like it wasn't going to do anything that was going to change what you know how I felt about it. So I was like, yeah, do you know what? That that can go. Um, but yeah, I don't know how long Astral Chain is. Maybe I can cane that and then trade it in. Against all oh, probably Zelda. 35 hours, so all oh, uh, oh, right, well, no chance then. Yeah, cool. I thought the same. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I did the same. I was like, I got control, I was like, let's just you know crush mm. it over a week, and I did that. And I, I got like 30 quid towards Astral Chain, um, mm-hmm. but that's the way we're saying. Yeah, I mean, I I'm just... like, it's, I'm just the worst person on earth. I do this for everything, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm like, I mean, I've never been into the Marvel stuff, but whenever it's like end game, end game tonight, I'm like, oh, I sort of feel a bit jealous. I'm not part of that. That excitement, of that, yeah, that's the movie. thing, isn't it? It's not even the. It's not like I need this as soon as possible. It's it's being part of the thing at the time that, yeah, <laughs> that it's I mean, happening. Half the fun of a new game is like being there on like day one for like the conversation and people are like, oh, yeah. I've played this. Oh, have you got this? Or what level are you on now? Or what have you done with your character? What what have you seen? You know, like yeah. you know. Uh, and the best example of that for me was when like uh, Breath of the Wild came yes. out. You know, and that uh, sometimes still happens now. Yeah, you still see like videos and gifts of that game. But yeah, yeah. in that first like month i guess it was maybe longer than that it was like every day like oh have you seen this or who's been there and, yeah, and that's yeah. a game unlike most games we're like oh we don't say anything about this game like controls like it's a spoiler mm-hmm. um that game because you can go in any direction for any point uh, there are so many things in the game it wasn't it wasn't a linear narrative that even when someone said oh i've been to this place and done this you weren't like oh you've ruined it now it was like yeah. oh wow but have you seen this so that's yeah, a really like- game in that regards yeah, because so many people were like, oh man, I've seen this video on Twitter and it's like, it's, you found out there's something you can do in Breath of the Wild. And it's like, mate, there's hundreds of things like that. And I guarantee you'll find your own. Like, don't worry about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. And that, 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 that's what really happens. But um, yeah, yeah like, being a part of the conversation is it. And I just, I ain't missing out on things. So I, I, I mean, yeah, I just want to be a day one 
Uh, day yeah. one or death, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, Sean Thomas, at Sean S. Thomas on Twitter. With the news that the 3DS and the Wii U are now officially dead, uh, is that official? Is that official? I like, what's the deal there? I mean, I mean dead in what sense? Like, they're not making games for them anymore, right? Is that what it means? I know. I, 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 I assume no official they're still statement, have there. Um, I've no I mean, idea. Obviously, yeah, the Wii U, uh, like the, server, the the shops being closed down, and stuff. But the 3DS, yeah. I thought that was still sort of. Oh, it's still the, going. It was the uh, it was the original Wii that had the shop closed, wasn't it? I think the Wii U e shop okay, is still right. still live and kicking, mate, and well, busier than ever. News, I'm sure. With the apparent um, news that the 3DS and Wii U are now officially dead, and the success of the Switch, do you think for the first time in Nintendo's history we'll see a straightforward single platform follow up, or even an iPhone model of yearly updates where old models gradually die out? I mean, I so when so. was the last time Nintendo was just a single platform? Obviously, before the. 3DS. I, I, guess, I right? genuinely can't remember because obviously before the 3DS it was the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance and they've always had two on the go. As far as I'm yeah, aware. it was like a home um, console and a handheld and now it's just... Sorry, oh, yeah, I'm reading the question that's probably why he says for the first time in Nintendo's history we'll see a straight forward. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, that is, given how well the Switch has done um, I don't see why they would change from that in future i guess but yeah, then, the issue is uh, the reason you know it, it's handheld consoles have done well yeah uh, is because they've also been cheaper than the hand the home the you know the home True. systems and so like and the obviously switch is generally <laughs> 300 pounds even the switch mm. Lite was is that's like 200 pounds so yeah it's still nowhere near the 2ds price bracket of 100 quid worth of game or whatever mm-hmm. that was yeah um but yeah i i can see them just sticking with switch i mean mm-hmm. um i hope they see yeah, it would be good for them to focus on one console for sure. I mean, mm. they haven't been focusing on 3DS for a long time anyway, it seems yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just cool that everything, because obviously, yeah, the, as we all know, the Wii U suffered for, um, you know, or from a lack of first party stuff. Whereas now it's like, well, imagine if everything that went to the 3DS also went to the Wii U, because that's what we're now getting with the Switch. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I can I can see them doing incremental updates. I mean, probably not yearly, but we're obviously already now seeing like three years down the line, yeah, three years down the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this new version of the Switch with improved processor and and which gives us better battery life. We've got the light now, so maybe every couple it's of years no more we'll see powerful, an update. Though, is it? Like, I think yeah, like it's Sean suggesting that maybe we'll see one that is actually like a little bit better. But I don't know if Nintendo would want to. I don't know. Would they worry about that being confusing for people? I don't actually know because well, we have the, the new 3DS, which was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You know. So do you think we're more likely to see a Switch Two, or obviously the Switch Pro rumor has been around for a while? But do you think in the future we're more likely to see Switch Two, Switch Three, Switch Three, etc., or just the new Switch or Switch? I'm starting Pro? to feel like if Switch Pro was a thing, we'd have seen something by now or heard something concrete. Do you? I mean like it makes sense to get a cheap one out before Christmas and then yeah, next true. year in yeah. the year of ne- you know PS5 and Xbox One X, bang, here's a much more power here's a more powerful potentially yeah. or bigger screen yeah, yeah, yeah. or fancier Switch console. Yeah. I mean I think yeah, certainly like Switch two, if that is a thing, is is a long way off. So yeah. Maybe it certainly wouldn't do them any harm to do a Switch Pro, like you say, basically the same internals but just like nicer in, mm-hmm. in various yeah. ways. Bigger um, screen, Bluetooth audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. Imagine, um, imagine releasing a device with Bluetooth audio in 2019. Um, that still does mad in. Yeah, it's annoying. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that, that is all I've got to say. Cool. What's next, um, <laughs> Mike Petit. No, oh, for fuck's sake, which one's this? <laughs> no, it, yeah, it's, it's Petit. Petit. Okay, Petit. Mike Petit eight nine. Yeah, we we'll end on yeah. this one. As the games industry slash internet slash world proves itself to be a shitty cesspit once again. What makes you guys happy slash optimistic? Not thinking about the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ignoring all that. Focusing I mean, for me, it's what like... is actually like in my immediate vicinity and not the, the things that are on the, the misery portal that is my telephone. Yeah. It, it's actually, it's video games, I'll be honest. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I lose myself in these things called video games. But mm-hmm. if, I mean, I'm not sure if it's been like, specific about the games industry rather than like just generally, but yeah, just, in terms yeah. of the games industry, it's just I, I, like the... I still get a lot of delight and happiness from seeing indie games come out and new mm-hmm. ideas yeah. sprouting from them. Like it's that's where the most happiness for it comes from is just seeing crazy new indie games or new developers or new stories, exciting things, new things yeah, that definitely. big publishers and developers aren't doing because you know it's it's too much of a risk and stuff. Um, yeah, that stuff still 
still sort of makes me happy and optimistic. In terms of general world stuff, I, I don't know. It's hard to say at the moment. Isn't it? mm. It's pretty hard to find some uh, optimism out there. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think, James? Uh, very little. It would be my answer today. <laughs> at the moment, there's very little that makes me feel like that. Like Matt yeah. said, though, it's probably games. I mean, yeah, I enjoy that. <laughs> I mean, certainly, really. like I know. Um, I think Matt watched the stream. I don't know if you did, James. Like, I if you are feeling just shit about everything that's going on, I I really recommend Wonder Song. Like, it's oh yeah, definitely. E- like easily one of the most life affirming things I've ever played. Um, but yeah, cannot recommend it enough. If you're feeling shit, I recommend going to our YouTube channel and just watching every <laughs> play by the bell in order. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will cheer you up. What does watch any of our stuff on there? Yeah, it, it like life is tough at the moment. There's so much going on, and it's just it's so it's you have to really block it out as much as you can because it's just there's just shit. I'm everywhere. still like so my Twitter account is locked now, and I think I prefer it because again it's it just doesn't mean we can't retweet you, which is a bit annoying. But yeah, uh, yeah sorry. I, I mean, you know, I yeah, yeah, I've, I've said before like if it wasn't for wanting to be able to promote show stuff i think i would be off it completely um so yeah like i can share show stuff but then yeah you can't retweet me from the show account but um yeah i uh, twitter is just fucking relentless and and especially this week as we've discussed um but then equally if it wasn't for twitter i would not have heard of you know like all the you know accounts of you know things that have been brought up this week and that has has been an education for me so you know it's like it's like with Twitter, you, you know, you sometimes you, you're reading bad stuff and you're like, this is upsetting to me, but there is, you know, there's education in it. And then sometimes you're just like, I don't need to see what Ben Shapiro thinks today. Thank you. I, it's just not necessary. Um, or, or, or ever. Or really. ever. Yeah. Like sometimes it's like, oh, I'm just punishing myself here. Like this is, this is completely fruitless. Um, so it, it's sort of, yeah, I don't know. How, how do you how do you filter out the just unnecessarily bad stuff with the, you know, this is painful to read, but I, it's something I should probably know about stuff. I will um, say in terms of like social media, like like Twitter just isn't a happy social media place. I I, no. I, I enjoy it and I go on it every day, like multiple times a day, obviously, but it's not a happy network. Whereas for me, no. I think Instagram is yes. a happier place for yeah, sure. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, totally. it, that has its own issues, you know, with yeah. influencers and ads and fake sort of uh, flexing and this and the other but generally on the whole you know instagram is a much better place for like for mental health just to scroll yeah. through those pictures you see nice stuff landscapes etc etc yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you're totally. not inundated with, with shit as long as you don't read the comment as long as you promise to never read the comments <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah anything, in, instagram's, instagram's a way happier network than, yeah. than twitter will ever be yeah, you know what we agreed. miss we miss we miss me verse that's that's what's uh that's showing that yeah one. yeah man <laughs> wasn't 100%. bad yeah uh, so, so on Switch, like, so can you not? You can draw on Switch, can't you? With like a with like a regular stylus, right? So I, I, I don't know why yeah, yeah. they didn't bring Miiverse back. It's still, like, especially with Switch, a bigger screen. It's, I guess because yeah, a stylus wasn't like, built in, it might be like a issue. I mean, it, that could, yeah, because uh, I know, like, obviously with the Switch, there was definitely a concerted effort to be like, like the interface is not cute or funny or weird like they have been in the past. It's so streamlined, and I, I appreciate that because. Like you know, the 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 menu is like, like from turning it on to actually getting a game, it's quicker than like the PS4 or whatever. Um, so I'm glad of that. But then Miiverse could just be a separate app. There's no reason it didn't yeah. have to be like you know, because you know, like on the like the Wii U, it was all sort of integrated. You had all the the Mii's running around and stuff, which was great. But you don't have to do that stuff. Like Miiverse can still be a separate thing and just doing like you know the everybody votes channel and shit. I love that. I mean, me's in general are really held back, aren't they? I mean, you, you create yeah. a me when you create an account, and you might do like a profile picture, but that's yeah. it. There's nothing else me related. But it's it's interesting I mean, that I think because I don't think people are too bothered about me's anymore, right? And I think Nintendo saw that coming. I think if they'd made like another big song and dance about me's, everyone would have been like, yeah, all right, <laughs> not not really bothered. Um, so I think it was the right move. But yeah, it is. It's strange for a company to see that coming and just not really bother with the with the new hardware ever like yeah you know like it's like you know if the new xbox came out and they just sort of went like yeah it doesn't really do achievements anymore like <laughs> yeah um it was like you know, it's not a cool thing anymore yeah like you sort of like if i'm being honest yeah i don't really care but it would seem weird for them to just not mm. really bother making a, a fuss about it but yeah 
I, sorry, I, mean, I, I think, completely yeah. forgot what my original point was. Someone else. They talk. should bring Meverse back. Is they the should answer. bring Meverse back. Yeah, do that. It was good. But yeah, yeah I mean, was... I'm sure. So they just wouldn't want the bother of like trying to moderate something like that in this day and age. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Especially because there's so many more Switch owners now. Like it'd be even worse than it was on Wii U. At least they could talk to all the Wii U people in a room and say, "Don't do that." Yeah. Uh, here, there's they've, they literally <laughs> sold millions of consoles. So we just have to daily do. people yeah. moaning about censorship, wouldn't we? It's, it's what's yeah. going on. Yeah, and like pictures being deleted without being told why. I mean, it happened in like Super Mario Maker too. So it's gonna <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. happen in Meverse. Uh, that's it for tweets. Thank you for your for your tweets. Let's get on to the end Woo! bit. Uh, today is Wednesday. If you're listening to this on the day this podcast comes out, and Sean is back with Sean Bell the Journey, the second <laughs> stream yep. tonight at nine p.m. on Twitch.tv slash the Computer Game Show. Even if you're not into FIFA or into football or whatever, it's well worth I'm a watch. I'm certainly not. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. The person streaming isn't. So you, that means you don't have to be. But it, it was absolutely brilliant. Watch last week. I cannot wait for 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 tonight's episode. And um, thanks, man. Or, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So please go over to our Twitch channel uh, and watch Sean there. Uh, there's no Friday streams from James for the next few weeks. Uh, James is going to have a well deserved break. Um, and so nothing on, nothing on Friday but on Sunday uh, me and James will be back to hopefully get Alex Kidd and Miracle World finished I can't make any promises <laughs> maybe if I concentrate on the game and just think business and not talk about you know weird ways you position contracts. your body when you're playing games <laughs> and mobile phone contracts that it kicked off on, Friday, on Sunday but yeah Sunday night that is me and James from half past eight on twitch.tv slash computer game show if you've got Amazon Prime and there's many of you out there that have it you also have Twitch Prime if you to connect your accounts and with that you get one free subscription every month and uh, many of you do but we'd really appreciate it if you go over to our channel and give us your monthly sub um, you can't spend you can't spend it on yourself you have to give it to someone and we'd love it if you gave, came over to our channel and gave it to us we'd really appreciate it uh, we're also on Patreon if you want to support the show in another way patreon.com slash tcgs uh, you can give us various bits of money to get some like exclusive podcasts or early access to our videos speaking of which our nintendo wii at e3 2006 is now uh available to watch for everyone it's like on our youtube channel just search for tcgs on youtube uh that nintendo wii one was was great especially because really the previous one we did was wii u yeah. and it was a massive <laughs> contrast um yeah so go to our just search for tcgs on youtube and you'll find us and, and that video is now available uh we launched a store in the last couple of weeks go to the computer game show.com slash store and you can get some t-shirts and other merch um there's 10 percent off up until the 20th of september an extra five on top of that as well if you're a patreon uh, subscriber so I think about going over to there uh, we've got the website I've just mentioned and Star Calls we are going to record the round table this week in fact by the time you listen to this we should have already recorded it mm. in which case I was going to say send your emails in don't because it's already too late <laughs> I mean, you can, but we won't read them and we won't yeah. respond to them. Hopefully, so, uh, if, you, if, if you listen to this, it is now too late to send your emails in. It's basically <laughs> what I'm going to say. Um, hopefully, the round table will, will be out soon if we have indeed recorded it last night as planned. Uh, and that's it. Um, yeah. Guys, it's been another long one. I don't know how this keeps happening. Um, right. It's a problem <laughs> that we need to fix. The games keep coming. But I, yeah. I, I, actually, next week, I don't... So this week, I don't think anything big is coming. Maybe I've forgotten something, but... Uh, yeah, there'll be something we've forgotten I think about. it's a quiet one, but Can't who knows? Wait. I've got Astral Chain to get to get done. And yeah. can you please try and play a bit of Control? I know it doesn't inspire you, but... Yeah, well... No, definitely. I mean, I play, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll see. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right, cool. Thanks for listening. Um, I, it's, it's always weird, like, when we do a long one, I'm sort of a bit, like, apologetic, but then people are like, fuck yeah, this is great. This is going to last me, like, a whole week's worth of commutes. So, um, yeah. Cheers to those people, I guess. Uh, thanks for listening, and thanks for just uh, letting us be natural, basically. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.